Good morning. It's still morning here. <laughs> we did it, guys. In San Francisco. Managed to <clears throat> get this show going. Whoa, that was cool. Old bird yeah, in the background of the shot there. Yeah. We're in San Francisco. There's the Sutro Tower. Hooray. For those of you on Facebook, I'm pointing at it. And um, it's, you know, over there on Instagram. And <laughs> since my screen has changed, I don't know where it is um, on our live <laughs> recording. This episode is being recorded live. Uh, it's also being streamed live. I guess I'll start off by introducing myself. I'm JP, and this is Ambrizi. Um, we have Mo over here. Hi, humans. And we got Wes halfway in the shot there. Uh -huh. Hello. <laughs> we're uh, we're coming to you live from San Francisco. This is the sixth episode. It's our second official episode. We're we're recording it live, and we will be releasing the live recording, <clears throat> you know, when I get a chance to edit the uh, audio and the video together, and then some Wi-Fi um, to be able to op upload it. Uh, we released episode 5 just the other day um, on Saturday. Uh, it's on FOSAD5150. YouTube channel. Um, I'd like to start live streaming from YouTube. So if you guys want to start seeing a YouTube live stream of the Cups and Bulls show, go follow JP Fosad on YouTube uh, because I need 5,000 subscribers to uh, live stream from YouTube. Um, so I'll continue uploading the live recorded episodes to the Fosad 5150 YouTube channel. But if you want to see some live stream on YouTube, go follow me at JP Fosad or subscribe, whatever you do on YouTube these days. Everything keeps changing so quickly. Uh, we are here in the city celebrating some birthdays. And Breezy Woo! just uh, got a little bit older. Yay! Um, the other day on Thursday. I'm just hogging that joint no, there. Uh, and then our friend Corinne, uh, it was her birthday yesterday. Um, we got to go to Golden Gate Park. Um, I managed to fly. Oh, I meant to grab that because I rebuilt it. I flew the FPV drone that I rebuilt and works now uh, for like less than a minute probably until my controller died. <laughs> but you know it works I've got visuals um, and so that's a good thing and so I just need to charge that controller um, and then we came back here had some food uh, some party favors and we checked out urban putt mini indoor mini golf down in the mission district that shit was pretty tight we had some fun, some drinks. Really good drinks. It was oh, cool. Yeah. Like, uh, there were all these people, and they kind of, you know, a lot of them look pretentious, but, like, to be honest, like, the people that were playing around us were really cool and nice. <laughs> and everyone was, like, you know, really, like, worked together and patient, you know, which, I mean, dude, that's awesome to, like, not see people being all pompous and stuff involving alcohol and and recreation and, and nightlife and stuff. It was just, it was nice to see how busy it could get. And um, everyone just really working together to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even at its busiest, it was only really like 15, 20 minute wait and then you got to take your turn. Yeah. So I encourage everyone go check out Urban Putt down the mission. I guess uh, there's one like in, in, in Seattle or Denver or, or s somewhere else too. Um, and, uh, it'd be nice since we tell you a little bit about ourselves, if you all wanted to tell us a little, a little bit something about you, you know, like you want to just like type a comment and be like, yo, I'm blah, blah, blah. And I'm tuning in from wherever. And, you know, I know Facebook and Instagram don't really work so well like that. Cause most of the people who see you are probably, they already know you. 
and this is kind of one of the reasons that I want to like branch out to YouTube because I feel like when we go live on YouTube more people who are looking for live content are able to, to find people that they don't already subscribe to and know of it's one of the things I have trouble with social media the most is like it's geared towards where your posts are just going to like uh, people who know you already and know your content and it's like really hard to reach new viewers and new audiences and they've geared it this way so that you have to like pay these yep. these social media platforms yep. to advertise your content to people who don't know you and then you're an ad on their feed and they're kind of like fuck this I don't want to see this this isn't what I want to see it's an ad and I don't want to be an ad I don't want to pay to be put in front of people like I just want you know there to be somewhere where people can go and, and find new content and, and new content creators mm -hmm. uh, and so as we come to the end of this beautifully rolled joint very tasty Thank you. kicking off the cups and bowls show the right way I'm going to introduce <coughs> Lavender Jones our buddy <laughs> blows these pipes but he doesn't just blow these pipes he he blows some just incredibly amazing pieces like this thing glows in the black light I mean you oh might be my. thinking like oh you know that thing looks kind of funny or you know whatever but really really it looks funny for a reason because it's epic it's got dude, this, <laughs> this little knob right here dude it is not it's Solid. It's it's solid. You know, I mean, you look at this and you're like, oh, what's the knob? No, dude, the knob's got like beautiful, beautiful stuff on the bottom of it there. It's incredible. Really, this is for our live recorded audience. Live recorded audience, live recorded video show feed. I know the pipe is not like super clean, but it's not super dirty either. We you love know? it lots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gorgeous. Um, we really appreciate it. And so we got this piece from Lavender Jones. You can find him uh, on Instagram. I know you can find Lavender Jones um, and his work. We were at Meat Art Sesh, and Meat Art Sesh was, it, it, it is, or it was, uh, uh, basically like a, a pop-up smoke sesh. Uh, where vendors um, with you know cannabis, <coughs> cannabis products, cannabis related things, like even just art, it doesn't have to be cannabis related, but most of the stuff was cannabis related since it was a, a smoke sesh. Um, it would like pop up every once in a while um, and you know it would include uh, cannabis vendors but also like local artists and stuff and Lavender Jones um, I think was you know it was like local to Oakland or something like East Bay. It was an event in Oakland that we, we found his work and we met him. But uh, it was really cool because we traded some weed for this piece, you know? Because we really, we wouldn't have been able to afford this piece if we weren't able to trade some, some herb for it. So, I mean, you talk about true con cannabis connoisseurship. Mm -hmm. um, and Lavender Jones, he's, he's someone who's invested in, in the cannabis culture. Um, and properly. does amazing work. Invested in it properly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's a true artist. He's not just looking to make a buck and sell you something. Like, he wants you to really appreciate the Quality. art that mm -hmm. that you, you have. That's um, beautiful. We love it. We love it. So I'm going to pack it. What are you going to be packing it with? Well, we have a couple things here. Nice. Um, <laughs> we have this Mac. Oh. This Mac is pretty oh, epic. Man, it is. I can't tell how good this is gonna come out for the live recording. Like a mirror with lights around so like, the edge uh, to show the weed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we're slowly but surely <laughs> getting our shit together here on the Cups and Bowls show. There's a number of things that I'm sure we could really improve. Um, oh, you know, I shouldn't Suggest. have turned that light off. Okay. Put it turn in the comments. On. Yeah, right. Leave us a comment. You know, tell us how to how to oh. do some better lighting or whatever. What but if this. You shine that light through your pipe a little bit too. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, I might be able to showcase it just a little bit. The colors on. And for all you people watching the live recorded episode, you really, I hope you're getting that color. It's like smoking original sin. Oh man. Jeez. Oh, I just, I can never get over it. So, I think what we're gonna do is, first we're gonna smoke some forbidden fruit um, in the lavender jo in the lavender Jones pipe. Oh yeah, I should shine that light through. Yeah, before you pack it. Woo! I don't know if that's doing any good. Such a great background. In the, Time of day is rough. Yeah, it's. See, the thing is, is we're on a balcony. You know, and the balcony is cool because you got the Sutro Tower in the background. Um, but the, it, it's also north facing and it's winter time. So we don't really get sun back here. <laughs> Not this time of day. Um, yeah. Much during this time of the year. Um, but, you know, like I said, there's a lot of things that the Cups and Bowls show has, has to work on and improve upon and maybe some supplemental lighting. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> uh, could be a, one of them eventually. I'm not, you know, super, super sav on lighting and stuff. It's like I'm not super sav on sound and everything. And Breezy's starting to really get get down on the sound. We're looking at some wireless mic systems and a receiver and, and then like a, some kind of like audio interface. There's a couple new ones. Actually, I'll bring that up real quick. Uh, I was, Amber's been doing research, and then these articles, you know, pop up in my new Google News feed, mm. and so what it is, is it's an, a multi-track audio recording without a computer or DAW, and I mean, you can use it with a computer or a DAW, but one of these has this place for you to put a micro SD card to basically um, record the channels raw through the SD card and then the other one has um, a USB port you can plug in like an external hard drive or a high quality thumb drive and do the same thing basically is <laughs> record just the raw audio tracks uh, aside from the computer DAW which I think is really cool. The first yeah, one is okay. called the Lynx Aurora, or the Aurora, and the other one's called... Or maybe that's it, and so it's a it? Lynx Aurora, and an Aurora, oh no, there. The other one is a RME Fireface UFX Plus, which actually to me, that's the one with the USB port, and like, to, it seems like maybe that oh, that might be a little bit better than the SD I love card. Living in the future, sometimes. <laughs> but like, just looking at these interfaces, I almost kind of like the look so of the Aurora a little bit better. But like, I don't really know. I'm not an audio guy. You know what I mean? It just one looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than the other to me. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's better by any means. Reach out. Leave it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, dude, if you know anything about these multi-track recording systems and stuff, what's up? Yeah, I know Instagram keeps cutting in and out. Um, okay, so let's move on to smoking some some bowls. Ooh. <clears throat> um, we can have some bowls with here, our cups. Why don't you start that? Yeah. And, and I'll get birthday. I'll get into our first section here. TMI. <laughs> what is going on with us? Um. Let's let's start out with this little experience I had with Amazon. Um, dude, their app keeps like glitching out and stuff. Like, oh, it updates and then like it doesn't work right. Um, but then it, it won't work right if you don't update it, you know? So, you know, like I update my apps pretty regularly and <coughs> it, the Amazon app starts like putting multiple items in my cart. So I'll like put one item in my cart, but then two of the items show up or like uh, I'll choose an item and I'll add the insurance protection and then I'll put it in the cart and then two items show up. One has the, the insurance protection and one doesn't. And so I'll delete the one without the insurance protection and then 
the one that is still in the cart that's supposed to have the insurance, the, the insurance protection disappears off the one that's in the cart. You know what I mean? So, like, Amazon stuff keeps, like, screwing up and, and whatever. All right. So, I'll, let me, I'll get, to, I'll get into my point in just, just a second. <laughs> <laughs> There's this toy called a brain warp, and it was released back in like '96 or something. And when I was younger, I wasn't a kid. I was, you know, a little bit older, probably like 18 to 20. Um, I was like obsessed with this thing <laughs> when I saw it. Uh, it was like my one of my nieces or nephews had it, and they. <laughs> I, I started playing with it and I like I couldn't I couldn't put the damn thing down, and uh, so I was like, dude, my nephew now my my no you know it was my cousins my really young cousins they weren't nieces and nephews they were cousins that, and they had it so now my nephew my sister's son he's old enough to play with this thing, um, and so I was like. I'm gonna find one of these and get it for him. You know, and so I guess they're, they stopped making them and all this stuff. So now they're just like very limited um, in availability. Uh, and so I ordered them from Amazon. I ordered one for him and I ordered one for us. That's, that's how much of a child I am, I guess. Uh, so I asked Amazon to gift wrap the one I sent to him. I checked the little box, and I did this ship to multiple dresses, and like all this is, it's like so confusing, like trying to find like, where do I go to ship to a new dress? Oh, the dress isn't in the system, so I have to back up, and they have to add the dress, and they have to go back to ship to multiple dresses. It's just, it's just so confusing. Like if you want to add a feature to an app, make sure that you do it and make it clear. And, and like test its clarity somehow or something before just releasing this feature because I mean dude I don't do all this complex shit with Amazon and, and ordering online and stuff all the time but sometimes I do and and so I chose to have the toy that I was sending to my nephew for his birthday to be gift wrap <laughs> And I wrote a little note, you know, like a little personal, instead of just being like, oh, here's a gift from, from Amazon, you know, like I typed in my own little personal note. And then, and I, dude, because I don't do this very often, I literally like did step by step before I clicked continue. Like I made sure everything like three times went over it, said it out loud back to myself, making sure that this shit is, is going to happen correctly. Because uh, he's he doesn't even live in the state, you know, and um, I have a warrant in the state he lives in, so I can't go visit him. Um, Which state <laughs> is it? <laughs> um, anyway, state of mind, man. <laughs> our toy shows up, <laughs> gift wrap, <laughs> with the note that I wrote for my nephew. <laughs> and at first, like I was just frustrated, and I was like, <laughs> "Fuck, man." Like, fucking Amazon. And then, like, uh, I was like, damn, dude, now his is just going to show up in a fucking box or whatever. And so, like, I wrote Amazon, and they have this little chat feature on their app. And, like, once you, like, battle through the bots of the chat part of the app, y y you might actually be talking to someone real. Um... <laughs> And like, dude, I tried to explain that I took my time and I followed the prompts exactly. Like, and like, I'm typing this in the chat and I'm explaining the whole process that I went through and what happened. And like, the people, they don't want to understand because they don't really want to help you. They just want to tell you something that makes you feel better so that you drop it. <laughs> and like, and then they want to argue with you and tell you that it was your fault, and not their fault. And I'm like trying to explain that their app, their app is like glitchy, you know. And they're like, oh no, it's technology. It, you know, it's perfect. It's better than humans. And you know, I'm like, dude, yeah, not when it's fucking glitchy. We got a, we got that mattress issue we just had with them where we ordered this really expensive mattress. They had it in stock. We're waiting for it, 
And it took a while longer than it was supposed yeah, to. Yeah, saying delivery date to be determined. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it was in stock. Uh -huh. And we call them up, and they're like, well, we don't understand why this didn't get delivered. It's oh, in stock. Yeah, yeah. We're like, yeah, we don't understand either. We paid for it. You took the money. And when they're like, well, it's just best if we send you back the money and you reorder it. And we're like, all right, we'll send us back the money. And it's been almost a week now. We still don't have the money back. We don't have our mattress. Uh -huh. It's like we would have been better off just going down, you to know, a to bed a, store. yeah, just to a bed store, or anything, even a even a, a swap, swap meet. meet. Yeah. If you want shit to be convenient, then keep it convenient. Yeah, for real. And make sure your fucking shit works. You know, you're making so much fucking money, you know, and you know a lot of these people, they probably are like, oh, whatever, like something happened, I'll just reorder it. I can afford it. It's on my Amazon credit. It builds my credit. I fucking you know, work for Amazon and I make fucking six figures, you know, whatever, you know, uh, and they just fucking rake in bank off of shit that doesn't work and people, While abusing dude, their employees. It's, it's too frustrating. So yeah, it's too frustrating to even, so I, I, I wrote and I talked to him and I explained, I was like, do you think that you guys could just refund the gift wrap cost S since I followed your guys' directions and you sent the gift wrapped item to the wrong address and it took like I swear two like a day or so maybe just a day but maybe more of like going back and forth with this chat option and finally <laughs> it, this one morning I w was like looking at the, the app or what I was look, like looking at my order or something something I ordered and I was like you know what I'm gonna look, like just see about that chat and I go to the chat and I just like you know the little middle finger emoji I put the little middle finger emoji in the chat and I just sent that off to Amazon because you know they never really resolved my issue uh, not not to my liking anyway and someone gets back to me and they're like, oh, I see why you're frustrated and da 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 and uh, let us try to, you know, make this right. We're going to refund the gift wrap. And and they refunded the gift wrap. But I, and I'm stoked. They refunded. It was like fucking five bucks or something. And I was just like, that five dollars actually means something to me because I'm not hella wealthy. And I'm like, really? That fucking five dollars means enough to Amazon to like fight me on the refund of the gift wrap? Every dollar. I don't know, dude. And you know what? I know I didn't do anything wrong, but even if I did do it wrong, you know, like <laughs> for Amazon just to be like, oh, you know, we know that it can be confusing trying to navigate these systems, especially when you're unfamiliar with them. So let us just do you a favor and refund the gift wrap since, you know, it didn't end up going to your nephew. Like, that's the business that ethics that I remember growing up. That's the business ethics that the better Bureau of Better Business supposedly stands for and all this shit. But I mean, like, why would anyone provide efficacious service <coughs> when the example from the very top it being set is to just fuck them? That's meant. Look at Trump. The president of the nation, he just is like, I can do whatever the fuck I want because I'm the fucking president and blah, 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 blah. And like, I just see every other authority or, or presumed authority kind of coming at their position in the sense like, oh, I'm the authority. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, fuck that shit. Fuck authority. The only real authority is self-authority. But everyone's too fucking lazy to to take accountability for themselves, and so they put authority in the hands of these fucking sociopaths who are willing to take the power. That's the people you don't want to put the power in the hands of, is the people who want the power. They're the scariest <laughs> motherfuckers. You know, yeah. And if you have to put power in someone's hands, at least find someone that doesn't want it who can wield it correctly. Force I don't it know. on them. Hold it down and force the power on top of them until, until they take it. People... <laughs> who are powerful need to take responsibility to be powerful in the right ways and, and wield their powers in the right ways um, and try to move away from being in the position of power by empowering the people around them. Like, we need efficacious 
leaders and authorities in order to set efficacious examples of leadership and authority for individuals to eventually become their own leader and authority in a positive way where we're making choices that yeah, are beneficial. we need somebody to inspire that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Right. We need to take personal accountability too and, and look at our own our own levels of, of what we contribute. Not not in like a mm -hmm. run out and, and not that, you know, de what's a, not that nonviolent protest isn't a good thing, but also like you don't need a whole group of people to prove that you, you believe it's something. Go out and do it every single day. Go yep. out and, you know. Be the and, change you want to see. Exactly. And, and just don't. That's what that means. Just don't accept like and, and on any level. Your, your, your own personal integrity is all that really matters. And if you're holding that, then that's the example. You know, that's how I feel about it anyways. So basically I got the gift wrap refunded by Amazon. Are you kidding me? Come on. And um, on to the next bit of too much information. <laughs> Truckers these days. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, you know, consider the company you're with. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm talking about... Dude, these motherfuckers... Okay, there is like... Like, roadway rules, I think, for, for like large trucks. Yep. And they say something about once there's so many cars in a line behind them that they're required to use the, the turnouts to allow passing. I'm pretty sure it's something like five or more cars and you're like they're legally required to like move out. M like get over wh wherever they can for to allow passing and shit. There's even signs on these roads that we're driving where there's like fucking 30 cars in front of us and like 30 cars behind us and like it's butt ass early in the morning, and all everyone wants to do is get to work or fucking kill each other trying to get there. And these trucks just have no fucking regard for like what's going on in the world. They, I fucking swear, dude. And so I just started taking pictures uh, of the lines of cars behind them, and then the pictures of the license plates and and the numbers on the sides of the trucks, and posting them to these you know Facebook bulletin boards of the areas that this is going on um, because I just I want some consideration you know what I mean like w if you're a car you know y you watch out for bicyclists and motorcycles and pedestrians well if you're a fucking truck watch out for the other traffic on the fucking road your job is to fucking drive you're getting paid to fucking drive you know what I mean everyone else is not fucking getting paid to try to get the fuck to work they want to be sleeping sorry that's my fucking truck around. <laughs> I can offer a perspective on this. Is it because uh, uh, most companies now are regulating their trucks at like 55, especially up to California yeah. drivers? Yeah. Now, uh, there's there's certain elements where like. Because you did this for. Yeah, yeah, I did this for a year and a half. So I have like, uh, and I and I, I don't a. like the. Uh, I, I agree. There's a lot of um, basically the the industry treats these people. Or just as bad, truckers. if not worse. They yeah, tr they treat the truck truckers, drivers, if, yeah, if, if yeah. not yeah. worse than like Amazon and all these <laughs> yep. other things. Yep. And uh, there was a times where I was running fourteen-hour shifts, uh, all the uh, way past DOT standards, and uh, and they push right. you, push you, and yep. I was making less than what the, the average person makes at McDonald's. So it's like it, it's it's not <laughs> this. Fuck, and on dude. top of that, like the reality is, these people have. If you're successful as a trucker. You're spending a, some all your time on the road. You have no personal life, yep. no tie to yep. anything, and you you don't really have any regard for the average right. person because you're so you, big. You, yeah, yeah, uh, and you have no re like. There's no relationship <coughs> to normal life. No, they're completely disconnected. Yeah, it's really difficult, yeah. and that's why I find it, found it difficult. I was so I'm usually pretty good with being isolated. I I don't mind being isolated. But that was a level of isolation where you you feel like it's a, you're almost in prison because you're in this cab yeah. all the time. You can't really escape it. Yeah. You're, you're traveling down the road, but you, you're in there in that cab ten yeah. hours a day. So yeah. it's like you're you know, seeing the world, but you're not getting to experience. Yeah, it. it's all through a window. Yeah. You know, it's going by at sixty something miles an yeah. hour. You know, and yeah, it's it's there's levels where like they're trying to get by or whatever. But on top of that, they're just they're just rude people no matter what you know and and yeah half of the people are really trying to just do their job the other half are just being complete pricks 
<laughs> like, no doubt, you know, yeah, and feel, it's rude. I feel bad for being frustrated, you know, because I, I can only imagine that they're just as frustrated in their own ways, you know, and maybe their lack of consideration is just simply microaggressions, you know, that they're Absolutely. taking out, that are being taken out on them. They're just, you know, kicking the shit down the hill yep. by not, t- you know, consider. It's like these. But people- I don't alleviate them either. They're, they're. Yeah, I was that right, guy too. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm you so, know what I mean? So but brick at times as well. There's the drivers yeah. that just drive in the left lane too, and they just fuck. They're like, I'm gonna fucking put my cruise control on between <laughs> 65 and 75, and I'm gonna be traffic control. I'm gonna drive in the left fucking lane, and because I'm going more than the speed limit, nobody should go faster than me. And so then they're causing people who do want to go faster than them to get in the right lane, which is not for passing, to go around them, which causes an unsafe situation. And it's like, you're supposed to move over for faster moving vehicles. The left lane is supposed to be for passing. And if you can't pass, you should back off and get into the lane behind you. Or that, because sometimes the weights, especially when they're going up a grade. Oh, I just thought about cars. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. No, I'm just talking about the people in normal vehicles that drive in the left fucking lane and yeah. and don't move over for cars that are moving fast. Yeah, when they're, when, they're, when they're regulating the speed and they have the capability Dude, what, to go fast, what, that's irritating as hell. I, and it's like uh, I saw this Vice video about gang stalking the other day. Gang stalking? Yeah, so gang stalking is this thing where these individuals, um, through observation, become convinced that... Uh, there are groups of people who are intentionally agonizing and frustrating specific individuals. You know, and like, I'm not saying that there's not, I'm not discrediting them at all. Like, but it, 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 it is hard to imagine so much energy being focused, you know, on, on, you know, specific random individuals and whatnot. I mean, maybe there is some greater intention at work, you know, that knows what it's doing by messing with certain people. but. I thought about it and I was like, I mean, okay, so even if there are these agencies or these agent provocateurs who are like being employed to create frustration and animosity um, in the public by intentionally uh, driving poorly or or like um, just e- even just I- in walking around being belligerent or d- like, dude, like I swear, like some people. This happens walking into the grocery store constantly, okay? Of all the places that you could stop and check your purse, your phone, your list, whatever the fuck that you need to do that you can't move while you're doing, okay? They choose to do this stopping thing right in the fucking doorway. Common courtesies, yeah. Being aware of other people needing uh, spatial awareness, that that's a huge issue in big cities. Especially. Dude. I was in Safeway the other day, and some dude walks up behind me in line, and he tries to bully me in line. He gets so close behind me, because, like, I'm giving the person in front of me space. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, yes, the belt is not full of stuff. The guy doesn't even, I don't even see anything in this dude's hands, okay? Like, he he doesn't have, like, gallons of milk or cases of beer he needs to put on the belt. Right. You know? And, like, uh... Our item, I think, was like on the belt, and it, it, you know, it just it was it hadn't moved down yet, and the person was paying or something, and I don't know, like I just like to give people plenty of room, you know, in case they need to move back and forth or side to side or, or anything, and like, I realized this guy was standing so close. If I were to not have realized he was there and like taken a step back or or even just pivoted, like I would have stepped on him, you know, yeah. and so I was like, should have. Uh, I you asked him. You gotta learn personal space. I asked him. I was like, "Dude, have you never heard of personal space?" <laughs> and, and like, he just kind of looks at me and smirks, you know. And, I, <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, obviously not." You know what I mean? And and he says to me, "You could move up further in line." And I was like, "You could just not stand so fucking close to me." And then the dude behind us like chimes in. Oh my god. And like he looks at me and I've got like dreadlocks and shit, whatever. And I look the way I do or whatever, or like I don't know, we just got done trimming so we probably smell like weed. And he looks at the other guy and the other guy looks like some fucking schmuck, you know, like just fucking run of the mill, obey, 
fucking don't step out of line Basic and bro. and microaggression all your authorities in your life onto everyone else and like so he's trying to fucking bully me forward in this Safeway line by like getting so fucking close to me I can practically feel his fucking hot nasty breath <clears throat> and I just told him I was like dude you're really lucky that you're doing this to someone like me because if I wasn't me you know what I mean? Like, this might not end peacefully. Yeah, you. I mean, there, there's a big a disconnect right now where, like, I feel like there's a generation coming up who hadn't gotten disciplined as a kid physically. And while I don't condone it, it it's something that, that if you didn't get into fights as a kid or you didn't, you're not used to handling conflict, the, the, the these things that, like, you, if you test the wrong people... There's a lot of polite people in society, but then there's other people who don't give a shit about being polite in society, and they'll take you out, and they'll hurt you bad, and it's like, just randomly testing strangers like that is is not smart to do in general. You know, you, you're going to piss off the wrong one on the wrong day, yeah. and it's going to end up that's, bad. That's what I keep warning people I live people under the of. philosophy that it doesn't hurt me to be kind. That's too. That's just too. be kind. It does not hurt to put good energy out in the world. So that way, you can receive good energy from the world. It doesn't hurt you to be kind. You don't have to be a dick all the time. You don't yeah, have don't to be a prick tossed. all the time. Just because you're having a bad day, you don't need to put that energy on other people. Microaggression it out on everyone else. Yeah, you exactly. need to transform that energy within yourself and still be strong enough to put out positive energy no matter how bad your day is. I have yeah. to say, like, I'm not the best at responding to negative energy either. You know, like, I, I, I was, kind of, well, you know, when this guy crept it's up hard. on me, I was like, you know, I was, I was, I was a little bit rude, you know, because... You, you know, I was already on the time. defense, you know, because I felt he like he was already was encroaching aggressing. on your space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you He's know, it's just pushing boundaries. something that some of us have to work on more than other people. I'd say the majority of people probably need to work on it more, including myself. But, yeah, like, I, I could have been like, uh, pardon me, could you please, you know, back away from my personal space slightly, you know, and, like, been totally calm and polite. And then, like, maybe it wouldn't have been this uh a- a- animosity kind of scene where like we're challenging each other's egos you know yeah he might know? not have heard you some people can't hear kindness mm-hmm. yeah True. yeah i mean it's 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 a it's a struggle on both and you got to have your own personal boundaries yeah. and then you also got to learn how to uh pick your battles as well if if you can't <laughs> like if you if you if you go off on something I'm stupid and then wind up in a fist fight because somebody got in your personal space a little bit Right. That I'm might be. Right that's bad. definitely too far. If you if if they're right. being rude to you and you respond and kind of be like a little bit rude back, be like, hey, you're you show you're showing them that they're being rude by being rude and maybe too too negative yeah, don't equal a positive. Right. Mm-hmm. But right. it, you're just trying to reflect that. Hey, what what's with you right now? Why are you doing this? This shouldn't even be happening in the first place. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people feel that. But it's like the but what you were sp- speaking to earlier that I thought was interesting that I'm seeing a lot more of now is people are not only testing. But then they're blowing up a situation that's really is very, very minute mm-hmm. into these massive, massive mm-hmm. issues. And it's like, no, 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 this is just a simple, can you please give me some space? Yeah, my bad. And that's as far as it had to have gone. Yeah, like but he could have totally re- responded to my less than mm-hmm. positive response to him by being like, been, oh, hey, I'm sorry, no problem. Yeah, okay. yeah, you know. He could have like, just been chill about it. So we both could have handled things differently and probably more maturely and it wouldn't have been a negative, like, because we, we, we parted ways with negative vibes. So, yeah. you know, we made this, this karmic connection. And it stuck with you. That, yeah, we'll have to be resolved somewhere down the road. Whereas, you know, if one of us would have, like, relinquished our egos and, and took the higher path, then we would have been able to release the karmic energy right then and there and, and moved on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, and that's like hard work, man. When you hard work being a good person. And when you respond negatively, and this is again why why it's important to work on it because I, whenever I respond negatively, it's it's twice as much, even three times as much work to repair yep. that. Like it's yep. affected you to the point where you're talking about it now, yep. and it's still been in your head. Oh, yeah. Had it just been like oh, you know I'm what sure the he's hell with it. about it too. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, <laughs> right. but why carry that? Like it's not going to help you, and and it's nothing. You, mm-hmm. If you could, it I'm trying me. to work on that. It doesn't help him. It doesn't yeah. help other it's people who they have mess. interactions with or I have interactions with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> speaking of rude, 
Thanks, BG and E. <laughs> fucking PSPS PS motherfuckers. You shut the power off on Ambrizi's fucking birthday. <laughs> but at the same time, in a way, I have to thank you because you pushed us to actually uh, do something and, and share it with the people who she loves and love us. We got to actually spend her birthday with her parents. Um, and uh, there was power there. Uh, so <laughs> we got to watch some South Park and catch up on some Rick and Morty. Nice. Oh, how fun. It was really good times. And and Corinne came over and had dinner with us and cake and celebrated uh. Embreezy's birthday um, with us there. Um, and then, yeah, she came down here and met us here and we all kicked it yesterday. That's they had to take fun. off a little early this morning, so that's why they're not joining us for the, the show. But... I'm like, okay, I'm kind of confused about this whole pg thing, because like everyone's like, it comes down to these larger issues, like some people are saying like, oh, pg and is this corrupt company who's not fixing their stuff, and it's causing these fires, and then other people are like, oh no, there's public oversight committees, and the public oversight committees aren't allowing pg e to spend the money to fix their stuff. But at the same time, these C, these PG&E CEOs are getting these huge payouts and, and bonuses and, like, whatever the fucking their pension shit and stuff. Like, I don't know about all that stuff because I don't have it, but they get it and it's huge and it's crazy and everyone's, like, arguing back and forth. I'm like, okay, okay. It seems like there's, like, these two problems here going on. You know, one is this if there's a public oversight committee and they're not allowing pg e to spend the money to fix the equipment, this issue needs to be addressed. Like, are these people on this public oversight committee being paid to, you know, by somebody with some clandestine intentions, you know, to prevent pg e from being able to spend the money on the equipment, but allowing them to do these huge CEO payout type kind of stuff? Um, or is it really just a problem that the public oversight committee doesn't understand, like the needs of PG&E to upkeep their equipment? Is there a public oversight committee, or is it just PG&E deciding not to to spend the money on fixing the equipment and just doing huge CEO payout shit? So yes. like, I don't have the answers. Like, uh, but these are questions that I'm asking you, and like, we all need to figure out the answers. Um, otherwise, I mean, I don't know, maybe we should all just band together and take over PG&E ourselves, you know, and then start, uh, you know, getting the equipment fixed. I mean, it doesn't cost money to get shit done, okay? You think it costs money to get shit done because that's the story that's being told, but really what it costs is energy and resources. And, like, we don't buy resources from the earth. We spend energy collecting them and... Uh, uh, and and processing them, you know, into usable parts and things, and you know, and then it takes energy to apply these these tools that we make out of the resources, and you know, using the resources to build stuff. You know, so you know, it doesn't cost money to keep up the equipment. What it costs is the materials that need to be replaced in in the equipment, or or to be build, you know, to build the equipment to replace the old equipment, and to be installed and properly maintained, which takes manpower. And, and equipment resources. There's oh, no money man. in this equation, okay? More because jobs? You, you say, oh, you have to pay that manpower and you have to purchase those equipment resources. Yeah. But no, you don't. No, you don't. Because if the guy that's maintaining the pg e equipment doesn't need to pay rent or for transportation or for food, uh, you know, or for his vacation when it's his off time, then, like, wouldn't you rather look if you get paid then you can only afford to do as much as you get paid to do okay and so if you just gave up making a certain amount of money for the access to the opportunity to do what it is you really want to do regardless of how much you make or how much it costs because it doesn't cost anything you don't make anything okay we're just talking about people being productive and participating for the purpose of raising the quality of life for us all, okay? You know, if the guy that's collecting the garbage gets to take the same fucking vacation as the doctor or the PG&E equipment maintenance guy, okay, Regard because they, because they don't make different amounts of money 
then I think a lot more people might be happy taking out the garbage who don't want to do these other things that they want to do because they make more money. You know, it's like you start having people doing the things that they want to do or the things that they're okay doing. If you don't have a desire of something particular to do, but you'd like to access the opportunity and benefits of participating, then you find something you don't mind doing and you do it because you enjoy what you get back from offering a product or service to the people who are providing the products and services that you're accessing. Well, abolishing money People. is never going to happen in this country. Yeah, well, with the current system, I mean, with it's the question... It's never going to happen. With the questions you asked initi money initially... Money is its own sickness. The, whether it was this or that, this or that, this or that, it's it's all three. They're all applicable. They they all are relevant to the overall problem. And it's, it's a matter of uh, accountability and greed. The people who have the money and the power don't have to be accountable... And they're greedy. So and it's what like, about the people who make the money? Now, they don't just have it; they make it. Like these are the yeah. people who like make. Or, what money do they use? But the money is what it equals power. It's, money it's a representative of power. It's a story. Yes, it's a story. It's not real. Right, like stories, you know, can mean things. Well, it's like a story that we're being told to represent value, but the real value is in us, you know, and the real value is in the earth. And the story of value that we're being told and embracing as, as a, a civilization is actually destroying the real value, the earth. It's destroying the real value, us. It's giving us cancer. It's destroying the environment. Like, I mean, come on people. If you're not seeing these connections but and you're not us. like realizing what's going on, um, you need to because if you don't you're being a part of the problem and we can't we don't have time For parts of the problem anymore. The parts of the problem need to be fixed now You know what I mean like it's not just Greta who's fucking saying this shit and demanding this shit Like there's a lot of us doing it in our independent lives And just because fucking the media doesn't focus on us doesn't mean we're not out here doing it You know, I I, I absolutely fucking stop the fucking system until they're willing to relinquish currency and relinquish petroleum you know I don't want to have to see gas stations burnt down and oil rigs burnt down I'd like to see them dismantled and reprocessed it's it's up to us how do we want things to happen you know like do we need a violent revolution in order to remove the people in power who refuse to relinquish it when they're not doing right or you know can we simply remove them from power by releasing ourselves of their structures of enslavement and control like money and violence and discrimination and I don't like you because you're different than me and I'm afraid of you because you do something different than me right. and I have to do what I want to do in a space that disturbs people instead of just being like I wouldn't want someone to do something that I didn't like in a space that disturbs me so I'm not going to do something that I like that might disturb somebody else in a shared space I'm going to go in, the, in a personal space but that's why they're taking the personal space away look at me I've got pipes and joints because I just keep rambling it's, a, it's more like the easiest way to do it that will affect the, the one straight to the source is to, to simply vote with your dollar that's the system the way it is currently and it, and with with everything that we want idealistically to change that will come with time but Im immediately if you just if you just invest your your coin into something that means something to you or that's better for for the the betterment of, of humanity around you then 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 right there the pe the people who are already taking advantage of everybody the way that that they're spending their money now will get hurt right where it counts and they'll they'll have to change they'll have to you but know what we gotta remember is that money all leads back to the same place and the same source and right so, but meaning meaning that initial the, the initial right. impact <coughs> right. you and make, then, you make the, but and so then wean it off with you know? that impact that you make against these people who are really encouraging the perpetuation of the currency in the authority system once you take the money away from them because you're putting it and you're using it to empower the people who don't have those intentions like your local artists your local pro pro producers your local 
um, people who are doing, you know, the things, turning the gears, you know, appreciate your taxi drivers and your, you know, uh, farmers and just the people, your the delivery, the, the, drivers. The delivery drivers, whatever service or product that you're using, appreciate where it's yeah. actually coming from and figure out how you can do that more locally. Because the thing is, is when you start investing more locally, you start to really realize that, y you know, you don't necessarily need to invest like it's all there and you just need to trade with other communities it's like this kombucha that we make we make this kombucha and you know we 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 <coughs> let people buy it from us but we also encourage them to make their own and we offer them scobies and classes on making their own kombucha you know if it's something you're interested in like not everybody is interested in it not everybody has the time so not everyone's going to make their own kombucha but i'm not saying they have to keep buying it from us the idea is though that they probably do something they probably offer some product or service you know and so uh, eventually you know maybe we are accessing some product or service that they are participating in that has to do with us making the kombucha. You know, you know who who knows? Maybe they work with tea, or you know, maybe they they help the supply chain of tea move to get to us. You know, like there's all these different ways to participate in, in systems that move create commerce and move goods, products, services, all these things, and make them available. Uh, that doesn't really rely on the exchange of money. It just relies on the participation, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that way the products and services that are actually desired and needed are the ones that are flourishing, you know, and you're not getting all this fucking junk made for you to just throw away and buy new stuff next year. You're actually getting quality goods and services. Learn to, learn to do something for yourself too, like just like no matter what it is, if, if you learn something that you like and you're in your you kind of enjoy and then you can share that with people and if they like to do it then you can teach them and it's the same principle. It's it's just, you know, you can spread this level of you can do for yourself and you don't have to rely so heavily on everything else. And you know, it, it's that system of, of having to go to work to make money to pay other people to do things that you could do for yourself. It's it's kind of silly if you could just save that money or whatever it is and then and then do for yourself learn how to do for yourself right yeah like you you guys taught me how to do kombucha and oh, yeah, i love it crushing it's it. fun and it's fucking delicious mm -hmm. and it's better than anything that i've ever purchased yeah or been mm -hmm. given yeah so the more you find out what Fabulous. it is you enjoy Fabulous. and what you like to do the the less you actually find that you need money, you, you know, that because now, oh, you don't have to buy this, or you don't have to yeah, buy that, or, you I know. I like a whole new skill. Mm -hmm. Because you're doing it for yourself, because you enjoy doing it, you know, and then you find that the people doing the things, you know, that you want or desire that you don't do for yourself, you know, and, and maybe they don't do the things that you do, but they desire the things that you do, and, and you start trading with them and stuff. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not having to haul around two chickens to trade for a cow everywhere. It's not it's not what we're t that's not the barber system that we're talking about. We got what am I gonna do with all my wampum and shit. Like people can post the service or the product that they have or they provide, you know, and and the surplus that they have. We could build social media networks for for creating commerce. Uh, with without any money like literally like so you become a member of the social media site right and everyone who's a member lists what they have to offer and other people who are members are able to access that and the people and so everyone's able to access everyone else's products or resources based on the product and resources that they're offering as well like Boom, there you go. Hey, you know, you don't have to carry the chickens and the cows around no more. We have to allow participation to be the medium of exchange. We've got to create a card that represents the chickens and the cows. <laughs> <laughs> it represents community because you, 
have to trust that everyone is providing a service or when they're not providing a service that they have the potential you know to and even if they don't they still deserve in some sense to be taken care of i mean yeah to discover everyone should at least be taken care of even if you don't want to provide you know a product or a service you know like uh you're you're gonna be bored in life you know (laughs) and like everyone's gonna kind of look at you and kind of be like what 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 are you doing you know what i mean like what what's what's your deal you know and, and they're just gonna be like oh yeah i just like to to do everything and utilize everything but i don't like to contribute and be like, oh yeah okay whatever yeah that sounds pretty boring to me because most people like doing something you know like and then Good to even always if you just like skills. playing or something like that you find whatever you, it is you enjoy doing for recreation you can actually participate in to offer your assistance in in some way you know like if you like hiking you can always get involved you can yeah get involved and be like a guide or something and then all of a sudden you're participating and offering your service and and you're you're earning your access to the service and products that everyone else is offering that's what i always done that fucking simple man doing just get involved and and when you it starts out like voluntarily if you're not getting paid so what you're doing it for the love of the thing yeah if it leads to a paid position cool yeah. Right. And in not, a sense, in I'm a, still loving the thing. In a sense, like it, eventually, maybe it won't have to lead to a paid anything. Like it will just lead to, well, actually, you'll have the access and the opportunity. Well, you'll just in, find in what it is you want to contribute. Right. I mean, idealistically, of course, if we could abolish money, life would be, in it would be infinitely better. But that's not going to happen in our lifetime. The, Garen, goddamn teed. I don't know. I can't, well, I, I think, I can't I think, say that. I think the value but, of, of what, what what you're trying to say is, is like in in the sense that if you, because kind of if you learn a, your passion, if you find something that you care about, and then you put some effort into it, learn all the elements of it, you'll start you'll start uh, attracting people who are like minded in that area, mm-hmm. and and then you'll start having a community around you who, mm. who, who are like-minded like you and then you don't feel so like separate or that you have to be a part of this overall thing mm. of, of like whatever the culture is saying or whatever the, the politics are saying you find you have, your own you find your own you know right. group of people yep. that you trust and you care about and you and you move forward together and and you're in like what you do. do around yeah like, like we, we do, do right here we bargain right here. and trade right. and things all the time yep yeah you know and we're better for it. <laughs> it's based off because we we build skill sets and we we're always learning and we're always, you know, trying to learn and do new things and and be uh, creative in our own and rights and inclusive. Yeah, inclusive and and you know That's we we inclusive. trade each other's <laughs> ideas and thoughts and and based off of that. We come up with new ideas and thoughts, and and it's it, that's how it really does work. And and if if you never leave your house, if you never you know get in and and amongst people, and, and if you never even say hello to a stranger, yeah, it, it's it's really it's really important um, to to overall quality of life. Yeah. You know? Speaking of money, um, <laughs> I just purchased a new drone and controller. <laughs> This segues are awesome. <laughs> um, the the reason that I got to purchase this new seven inch racing quad was because it's a seven inch and uh, there's not <coughs> a lot of seven inch going on. Um, so there's not a lot of parts or propellers for them and things. And so there's like this massive sale for these seven inch pre-built quads um, but they run spectrum receivers and not FR Sky and I'm used to flying FR Sky um, and so we had to order a, a spectrum radio um, and I'm, so yeah I'm gonna learn how to use uh, the spectrum radio controller and and uh, see I don't know like figure out wh- what the differences are or if there are really any differences between the FR Sky and the Spectrum interaction like in beta flight or whatever software it is that you use to to interact mm-hmm. with the flight controller for through through the Spectrum receiver I'm not sure if it's different or not I, that's I'm gonna have to learn you can follow uh, that that adventure at FOSAD FPV on YouTube or on Facebook um, or on Instagram. It's all FOSAD FPV. Some really cool footage. 
It's really high quality. Oh yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. Explain spectrum because the doctor said I'm on the spectrum. I still don't know what that means. Oh no, it's the, <laughs> spectrum is just the the brand, the the oh. company that makes the the the, the fucking dork receiver and the radio. <laughs> Love you. But uh, what was cool is uh, I got this seven inch through uh, Ryan at Anything RC in Ukiah. Um, I'd say he's the biggest supporter of Mendo FPV crew. Um, he he just he hooks it up, you know, when he knows what's up, and and he knows he can get quality product for for good deals. Um, he he lets you in on it, you know. He brings you in on it. He's super inclusive. His shop is just dude. It is the most comfortable place. To just go and hang out and learn about the RC culture. Um, they do cars and and truck crawlers and and boats and um, do the cars go so crazy fast and I, they do like planes and and drones and stuff. Like I think they do planes. Is that I'm pretty so? sure. Like I mean, dude. So I mean, if you're lucky. You might catch Zorro drop by the shop, dude. In Ukiah, uh, Antonio Banderas. No, <laughs> no, the real Zorro, Zorro FPV. Um, yeah, he he's they've got some some of Zorro's uh, fucking amazing graffiti art up in the shop. At anything I see, very cool. Yep, um, and. Ryan's just a really cool guy. His family is amazing. All the the Mendo FPV crew is super helpful. I swear I've learned more just hanging around anything I see and meeting uh, the Men Mendo FPV pilots uh, than I, I've been able to learn at all on my own or through any other shop ever in the past. Uh, so, you know, infinite thanks goes out to them. Um, I fixed the racing quad that I built. Um, I had broken those three arms flying it on our journey, which is available um, on FOSAB5150 YouTube. It's uh, our first film release of our summer road trip, uh, where I capture a whole bunch of different drone shots and stuff. But doing so, I totally crashed the shit out of the Aurora X frame that I built. And so I took this Aurora X stretch frame and I just moved the whole, all the guts of the quad and, and the motors. Actually, I fucked up one of the motors, so I had to take a different set of motors and put them on. Um, but I got that done and <clears throat> um, Daniel from Mendo FPV helped me get it worked out with Betaflight and um, all it took was a battery that works. One, one of my batteries like is fried, and so I guess that was battery I was trying to fly with it the day I went out to fly, and it wouldn't work. But I just hooked up a battery that did work to it, and it flies great. I just need to charge my controller like I was saying. Um, let's move on to existential artifacts. Because that was too much fucking information. <laughs> <laughs> but it did, I like that we, you ended on that, all that uh, RC stuff because that's a passion of yours and it speaks to everything you're talking about. It doesn't necessarily have to be making things. You just have an interest and you find a community and you get involved in it and it's and it creates this whole thing. Fucking A, yeah. dude. It is, it's amazing too, man. Like I, The people that I met like getting interested and involved in the culture um you know they're people that i really want to have friendships with and stuff and and they i see the way that they treat people versus the kind of people you meet going out to like i don't know bars and clubs and things like that involving drugs and alcohol and all this stuff um you know doing something that that is just active and involved and it, i mean the learning curve to rc is huge uh, but it's not necessarily impossible like the RC culture has developed a way um, for you to ease yourself into the culture and to have fun doing so I think that in the past um, you know it took 
so a number of years to, to really develop, you know, just developing the whole softwares and hardwares and everything that they have. It's incredible. And they've done it to a point where they've been able to really gear it towards people who don't have any understanding. That's, that's me. I'm coming at this whole thing with no understanding of electronics or, or mechanics or any of this stuff. It wasn't part of my life growing up. Um, you know, I, I did have, I do have a strong science background, so it makes it easier in math, like, for me to learn this stuff, but it's so new to me, like, none of it, I don't know, it's, I mean, it's even like, I'm trying to get my UAV license, and, uh, I'm ha I have to learn all this aeronautics stuff, and, and, like, and flying law stuff, and, and so every angle that I'm approaching this whole RC culture that I'm very, very passionate and interested in is new and fresh to me you know in ways like nothing else ever has been before and it's it's all coming at me from every angle all at once and it just is a mountain to take on but i'm taking it on at a level that's like a lot more intense than a lot of pe other people a lot of other people they just want to like fly and have fun or <laughs> race and drive and have fun yeah, it's true and passion like, you, have a, you I, have a goal i want to take it way it. further i want to be able to teach people how to build and fix quads and stuff like that and eventually learn about cars and boats and things um because I just I think that having like a really encompassing knowledge like Joshua Bardwell man like to, to aspire to, to have knowledge like him and an ability like him is just oh man what a dream what an amazing genius that guy is um, he is an inspiration to everyone in the RC culture and you know he he helps everyone in the culture and stuff and he's down to earth a uh, really cool seeming guy. I don't know him personally, but from what I see of him, he does these live Q and A's on his YouTube, and he answers people's questions. And you can like write him anytime, and you know he gets back to you, uh, you know, with, as soon as he can. And he get. I mean, he's getting more and more popular and busier and busier. So I can only imagine his workloads getting larger and larger. Um, and he probably would like some time to be able to enjoy his RC culture as well. <laughs> But he looks like he's really enjoying it with like uh, really investing in, in making it his livelihood. He's doing amazing and I, I'm infinitely appreciative for Joshua Bardwell. And we are infinitely appreciative of Anything RC and the Mendo FPV crew because they're really making RC and drone culture fun and enjoyable for us. Uh, but like we said, moving on to existential artifacts. Oh. I love I love your uh, titles. This is the first time I'm really hearing them, so it's just like wow, some profound titles. We're gonna smoke some Mac now. This is some black market indoor <coughs> greenhouse. Um, both of these are both uh, they're, they're both from the black market uh, indoor greenhouse canvas strains. It's really top shelf, amazing. Um, <coughs> We've sent probably about an hour on the first portion of the show, so I don't know. I I actually had more in kind of this portion of the show than any other. So let's jump into this here. There's something I need you all to understand. Okay, and I, I don't know why this isn't being taught in schools. Well, I mean, I guess I can't understand why they're not teaching this in schools. And if they are, like, I don't remember being taught it. Okay. I have to read this to you. For 222 years, out of 239 years, the U.S. <laughs> has been at war. That's this nation that I'm in right now. I'm a citizen of, when I work and pay taxes, that's going to the people who are choosing for our nation to be at war for 222 out of 239 years. Fuck, people. It's the biggest what the fuck? Like, there's a college of war. Where the fuck is the college of peace? We need to... Uh, you know what the biggest social fucking illness is? It's not fucking smoking. It's not fucking drugs and alcohol. It's not fucking money. It's fucking war. War 
and violence is the biggest social illness. Dude, I just, I don't even know what to say about being a citizen of a country who has been at peace for less than 20 fucking years of its existence. It's barely old enough to vote. I'm older than that. This country's been at peace for less years than I've been alive? This is just fucking mind-blowing. Okay, sorry. Uh, Paul White. <laughs> oh man, I wish we had a clip to insert right here. <laughs> right, like, so this is something like this would be a portion of the show where I would just say Paula White, <laughs> La Puta del Diablo, <laughs> and then run a clip for you because there's this clip floating around Twitter. Wait, is it going Numero on? Numero 6. It's hilarious. Um, and like, we've retweeted it. I don't have the link here. I don't know who tweeted it. But dude, this bitch is like beyond Downloading surreal. Heaven. Like no, like I I can't even believe the things that I hear coming out of this lady's <laughs> mouth and people buying it. I like She blessed the White House as holy ground. That's all did she know? Oh, so and she to not obey Trump would be as wrong as not obeying God. She says to disobey Ooh. the president is to disobey God. Like words so much from for her church mouth. And state, huh? She's an evangel in evangelical. Oh, that's right? one of my favorites. And like she talks about how like you need to send her money or else your dreams and aspirations will not come true and God will crush you. Have you not seen the secret? Dude, <laughs> like these are the people who need to be being bombed okay not fucking kids in fucking like poor country in gaza strip okay <laughs> yeah people that ain't got nothing yeah and that's that's a big deal too with the uh, Dude, the war we're dealing with too it's, it's america it's, what the fuck yeah it's interesting because like especially um i wish i can there's uh, the psychology of killing. It's um, it's a book on that was written by a Vietnam lieutenant. Uh, he he really goes deep on it because he's you know he's obviously been a part of it, studied it. Uh, he's he's worked he with ev everybody uh, who's who's been involved with the PTSD cases, and you know arguably Vietnam was probably the most horrific and and the first example where we really got to see what our side of war is and, and, and not, how it's not always uh, how it's not always noble in, in all its in all its effort, in all its efforts. It lifts the veil. But what's interesting about it was that in in the psychology the pro uh, the closer you are in proximity to the killing is is what gets in it to your core. The people who kill firsthand, like uh, with a knife in the gut or something, there's a lot going on there. Uh, psychologically, as opposed to somebody who's flying a drone in Nevada, you know, dropping bombs on people, pushing buttons. The right. further away, from, even a sniper will say they're less connected to the killing than somebody who mm -hmm. who is right there on the front lines of it. Staring down the, the, the eyes, they can in the see eyes of the, yeah, exactly, of the right, yeah, absolutely, and, man. And it's and it's and it's dangerous because now we're talking about just sending robots and to wipe people out. And it's like, how mm -hmm. more disconnected can we be to killing mm -hmm. people? And um, it's like, how many of us have have been in this position of having to kill or be killed? And I'm not talking about soldiers, you know, because, you know, as a soldier, that's your job, is to be put in that position. I'm talking about all of us out here, non-military personnel, okay? How many of us are put in the position of having to kill or be killed. How often are we even put in that position, if ever? You better okay. traffic around here? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but but really, you know, like yeah. that, just being in traffic around here, it, it's a dangerous situation because people are so disconnected from yes. what really killing and being killed is. Yes. Because, because people aren't put in the position of having to kill or be killed, they drive 
in ways that get themselves and other people killed. Because they are shooting at each other now. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what on the Bay Bridge? There yeah. was that thing where people were shooting at each other. For what? Like, I can't even. I oh, I can't even blame people because the way they people didn't use dr- a turn dude, signal. When people, when people do things on the road that put us in danger, and almost kill us, I I mean I feel like I want to hurt them. I don't hurt them because I know that's not the right thing to do, but it makes me feel inside like like m- something needs to happen to this person to uh, so that they they don't put other people and themselves in, in these dangerous situations. Uh, I don't know what else to say about that. Common courtesy, just it's maybe the revolution of common courtesy should be a thing. We should all be considering each other instead of trying to be like we are the most important thing. Uh, on, on the planet, and everybody else should get out of our way. We, yeah, it, we need to kill the ego. Yeah, it's it's more. It, it's just like I, I'm. I don't know. As con- I was raised in this way, and I don't know if this is a thing, but it's just like I mean, as far as that it, modern or past or whatever, uh, as uh, it, it's just like I'm aware of what my space takes up. If I'm in a doorway, I know that is going to open. Somebody's going to walk through. I don't stand in the doorway. If I if I don't, you know, if I if I open the door and somebody's right behind me, I hold it for him as like second nature. I don't even think about it. It's just like it's it's just something that is courteous to do, and it's and it's effortless. And and the more you practice it, the more it just happens. And it's like if 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 you just do it. it you realize how easy it is, and it and it continues, uh, uh, hopefully to inspire that kind of mm-hmm. behavior. The more it happens, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, pay it forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. It hurt me to be kind. Right, right, exactly the Take principle me. you were saying mm-hmm. earlier. It's mm-hmm. just, just doesn't do hurt. It to put that good energy out there. Mm-hmm. It's it's not a lot of effort. An example. That's why we're seeing a lot of global um, conflict, like what's happening in Bolivia with their democracy. What happened was a reporter who was just out trying to um, talk about the protests got pepper sprayed in the face on camera. No, oh, Jesus. Yeah, absolutely outrageous. The censorship and... Um, wow. Yeah, but they're also trying to do that here. I mean, they're trying to say oh, by the by well, yeah. pitting media against each other, they keep devaluing what what uh, what news and and information is. That's why it's so important. Well, they want to tell people what they want to hear now, not what the real news is. Well, and the other thing too is people have to be more accountable and and just as as individuals in in our own responsibility to really vet the information that we're consuming and make sure that it's 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 right. proper. It's it, you know that it's. It's been peer reviewed, or 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 you know that it has some legitimate sources, and 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 what I mean by legitimate sources is go down to the bottom of the web page, check their about us part, and then look at where the money comes from, what what their what their backgrounds are, and and really see what this what this page is about and who contributes to it. Like, and then they're, your media you know, about. exactly. You just you follow the money, and then you see where that information is coming from. Then you can understand really what what the what you're consuming as real or yeah. not real, you know. Yeah. What Don't it, forget what is the, intention? the president's tweets are presidential decrees, so be prepared <laughs> oh, every moment. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'll I'll keep my God, fingers. That lady's uh, insane, dude. That's uh, fucking insanity. I'll keep my fingers, Jesus, on the cross. T- <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Boom. I know. <laughs> hey, it what? Is it any worse than what 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 the reality of what she said is? It's no. like, come on. It, yeah, it, I know. Like it's difficult. You got to bring everything back to local, but you do need to know the information of what's going on globally. Yeah, of course. Of course. No, keep yourself informed. But also getting upset with the world at somebody who just spoke about it is not is not going to change the the view of the world. You you have to act locally under understand what's happening globally but act locally so like just just have your community be good to people around you oh, concern yourself with your life and your and be your best self but just be informed and don't let it get to you as as harsh as as you just try to do your best you know like cause that's all you can do getting angry at people for other people's problems that's not doing anything but pushing negativity out into the world you know
I'm sorry, we, now we I'm do ranting. We need to be <laughs> aware, though, of grand schemes that are happening. And we are being fed media from the people who are taking these actions, like Trump pulling the troops out of Syria mm. and Russian militia coming in and taking over those taxpayer built um, militias or um, compounds. Mm -hmm. We are contributing to policing the world, perpetuating oh, these wars dumb, dumb, a, a constant. That, we've been knowing that for hell of years. And we have to communicate about what is going on, like people, where it needs to stop. People are so afraid of change. That's the problem, because like these are the systems that they've only ever known. So they just keep building upon that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, but it's tradition. Some traditions are bad and should be changed. Duh! You can't evolve if you yeah. just stay in the stagnant ass system that you're in. What examples can you think of that were tradition in the past that we could probably do without today? Uh, <coughs> well, dude, like, Portugal is flourishing since they abolished, like, drug laws. You know? Like, suicide went down fucking you know jobs went up like you know everybody like just everybody's doing so well since they just got rid of this ridiculous ass notion that you know taking drugs or or you know involving yourself in that culture is is wrong and you should be barred from actually living life you yeah. know yeah yeah just, oh, sorry, go ahead. I think it's insane to incarcerate people because they ingest something. Yeah, personal you know? choice of what you do with your bodies obviously should be your yeah. own as long as you're not hurting anybody else or, or, or taxing other people. You know, forcing anything on other people like. Yeah. You know, that's the trouble is if the taxes hurting, are yeah. going to the war machine. Yeah, that, that well, thing. we sh definitely should have more of a of a of a say so and understanding what our taxes are Thank going to you. the clarity in yeah. the monetary system would bring trust and respect you know where are these dollars going and then not the that money is necessarily the best system but at least we have some understanding you see those ceos getting those huge salaries you right. see you know the division inequality well the confusion is so that they continue to to, to pull money for themselves while we continue to bicker amongst each other and 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 what a lot of it, what's interesting is there's more documentaries on these live stream things on Netflix and Prime and, and that that illustrate empires that have risen and fallen that could be drawn to parallels of what we're currently going through what we've been through we have our own loops of, of history that are happening that can, you can draw parallels that are happening currently and it and it's just interesting to see that there's all the, People are watching these in mass, and not, and whether if they make the connection, they're not really um, getting. They're upset about it, but not really doing the levels of I don't know. What, right, respecting. They're not taking action. Yeah, yeah, they're not taking action, but in a in a in a, in, a, in a way that is, is intelligent, effective. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, yeah, it's um. They're so passive, like. Yeah, it's it's like. They're so willing to just give all their power away. At what point, you know, do you force the power out of the hands of the people who are wielding it inefficaciously? Well, it uh, requires... Because they refuse to relinquish it pe peacefully. It requires people collaborating like this, like, to continue to, <laughs> to have these kind of conversations and be realistic about all sides of the, uh, of the machine that's happening so we can, like... <laughs> start to get a dialogue going uh, of of uh, you know. Uh, well, yeah. What what can I do to progress change right. that I need for my community to flourish? And people who know the system better than us, who can affect like actual change in those systems, if whether they're on the fence or whatever, they can yeah. they can help or get involved as the conversation progresses. You know, it, that's a matter of remaining teachable. Yeah. Being receptive to learning and furthering knowledge but that's a matter of breaking down ego because nobody's willing to be humble anymore i'm the best I'm the best i gotta be the best i gotta be number one i'm gonna be a star like america's priorities are completely fucked up so yeah until we as a whole realize that we need to do better 
for the greater good because there's things bigger than us that are important that we can contribute to. Yeah, the differences between us is not what's going to help us. Uh, the, yeah, the differences between us, especially the ones that are currently in that are currently dividing us, it, it they're really these kind of belief systems and traditional belief systems that that are relevant and still happening but it, it it's it's not as important as the bigger picture of what's happening it's to getting our, in the way it's getting in the way of, of our real progression of, of uniting as as a as a country as a world as a whatever what have you to diminish these boundaries between us and and literal boundaries on like in the sand it's mm -hmm. you know the only the only way to do it is is to to say you know these i well, we're focused on all these little microcosms that really in the long run don't make sense social politics are temporary always and they're always shifting like mm -hmm. the earth's issues are bigger like sometimes we need to remember we have nowhere else to go and so we might need to take care of some shit today yeah. and don't bank on mars today because that ain't happening right now yeah, and even if you could <laughs> even if you could if you ain't got the money they don't want you yeah so and you know i think there's some issues arising globally politically that are beginning to threaten the well-being of the earth and humanity as much as the pollution um, I mean what's going on in the Middle East uh, you know the US generals warning that Iran is is gonna um, make some offensive um, to, like make some move uh, you know we're, we're we're really talking about World War Three, World War Three, World War Three, World War Three. Um, you know, when you look at at the way that the, the nations are divided up, you know, uh, Russia and China, and Iran, uh, U.S., Europe, and Saudi Arabia. You know, and then you got like Israel and Turkey over there. But then, you know, you've got some other countries that are um, more uh, friendly to Russia and China and Iran. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, what, what I'm starting to see is this pattern uh, of the West trying to knock out these kind of on-the-fence nations. Um, you know, like, I, I feel like Iraq used to be this kind of wishy-washy on-the-fence nation never really knew which way they were going to go um, and and now it, it almost seems as though Iraq is, is, a, is a, a western ally bec because uh, uh, of what well, I mean the way that it is there now I'm pretty sure you know like as far as I can tell like the the, the system of authority is of western minded and influence uh, like at least as far as I can tell um, and and so they're, the West is trying to slowly build up uh, this this kind of almost like a curtain of, of nations in the Middle East um, as China and Russia are also building up their curtain of, of nations in the Middle East and I just I see the these oh, conflicts between these nations and and religious interests in the Middle East being the catalyst really uh, you know to the the other nations and world powers such as China, Russia, Europe, US, all getting involved. And I see a lot of this stuff that is going on in like South America and Africa that's unjust at being a part of uh, the, the resource grab that, that's happening in order to be able to, to fight the coming war between these superpowers. Like if you're not, if you're not seeing this culmination uh, to a, a, a third world war or global conflict, uh, you really should like take a look at history um, and and really take a look at how how things in the past have moved along. I mean, there are so many parallels going on, um, you know, as well as like parallels of of uh, neo global fascist 
regimes, like in in society, like the, the things that that are being done to people are reflecting things that have been done to people in mass genocides. Uh, we're just approaching uh, this this place in civilization and society uh, where we have the choice to, to either um, repeat the mistakes we've made in the past or or recognize that we are beginning to make them again and and choose a different path break the cycle I mean so you have these Zionists basically committing genocide against the Palestinians um, you have Trump pulling troops from Syria uh, surrendering American tax dollar built military bases to Russia I mean, I guess it's good to see America and Russia finally sharing something. <laughs> um, <clears throat> not that it's in, in any past. of our best interest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Trump. I guess there's something called um, the the Putin Erdogan deal, uh, and it has to do with the fate of Syria and it, it kind of reminds me of when Britain pulled out of Palestine leading to the 1948 first Arab-Israeli war uh, which was um, <clears throat> a war that led to the Six Day War in 1967 uh, and this is how Israel was was basically formed and carved out of uh, the majority um, Islamic nations in the Middle East as a Judeo-Christian nation and uh, there's been these territories I mean if you don't know about this you're gonna have to go find out for yourself because there's so much I can't even begin to, to go over it all but there were these territories in question and it's because basically the three major religions in the world you know claim a lot of these places to be like their religions homeland or holy land um, and they're refusing to share th these places and get along. Um, for me, for a Judeo-Christian religion, you know, which really I think Islam is very Judeo-Christian as well, like, uh, you have these, these basic fundamental ideas, um, in the philosophies of these religions like really attempting to create a state of peace and harmony and then like to see what's going on in the Middle East uh, where you have you know I grew up in a Jewish home I went to temple I went to Sunday school and I went to Friday night services and I learned about uh, a lot of the history and I grew up believing uh, that the Jews were just persecuted all throughout history and never did anything wrong and everyone just always hated us and <clears throat> as I got older and came into adulthood and kind of did my own reading and research like I found just in some of the reading that I did that you know it was you know it was actually the Jews who came out of the desert and you know they didn't just come upon a holy land but they actually came upon a land that was occupied by Canaanites and um, they ended up kicking out the Canaanites um, you know and now they're they're kicking out the Palestinians you know and uh, they're they're committing genocide against Palestinians is what's happening as far as I can tell um, and I'm not saying that there hasn't been violence from Palestinians towards Jews you know, it's been a conflict going on forever but if you just justify more violence based on violence it, it's an endless infinite cycle and like I, I don't I don't think at least that these people who perpetuated these uh, spiritual religious uh, beliefs for, for, for centuries and generations I don't think that that's what they had in mind at least I hope it's not what they had in mind and if it was it needs to end you know, it's an interesting um, series that I, I was kind of speaking to with the Netflix thing, and it kind of sums up really nicely what you're talking about. Uh, it illust it's called uh, Mankind, and it <clears throat> it illustrates each episode, uh, kind of the rise and fall of these of the world's empires throughout recorded history up to up 
you know, to date. And uh, it includes like Genghis Khan and 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 the uh, Romans and like every every major empire you could think of that you know from the start kind of to the finish and it's and it's really concise and and uh, and and to the point way and, and for for anybody who doesn't want to go too deep but still wants to understand it's it's perfect and because uh, I got a lot from it and then it it, it will. If you have more interest in it, then you can go, like you said, infinitely deeper mm -hmm. because there's so many little minutiae to it. But mm -hmm. just a, like a highlighted sum up, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting. It's really good. What I take away from it all is that it's now so complicated and complex and twisted and fucking mutated that it just, it just needs to end. It, it needs to stop. Like all the wrongs in the past, like we need to stop committing wrongs in yeah. the name of writing them which you just have adding to the pile <laughs> which leads me to where we're at right now uh, because you, you have things going on like the US is saying that these Israeli settlements are no longer illegal um, and the chief Palestinian uh, negotiator is saying that the U.S. decision was a risk to global stability, security, and peace, and that it threatened to replace international law with the law of the jungle. Yep. Whereas you have the Israeli Prime Minister r responding to th these actions as calling it right a historical wrong. And, um... I mean, Who's so yeah, like, mm. are the Jews going to give Israel back to the Canaanites? Oh, they can't. That's Should we convenient. give America back to the Native Americans? They, you know, you know, what about Africa and <laughs> South America? You know, That's like, fuck, dude. Yeah, man, like, th dude, this is this is fucking Where bullshit. Else are we and these are the leaders go? of the world who are who are pulling this fucking bullshit. Saying this little fucking kid shit. This is fucking. This is fucking daycare. Fucking go this stand in the fucking sand. corner, dude. No. Oh man. This is my sand. These are our fucking leaders. The people who are making the decisions for the world and like you people, we're all okay with this. Yeah, it's uh, it's that's what I'm saying. Like with the uh, personal accountability and then holding. Yeah. If we hold ourselves accountable, and then we we uh, we create a culture of, of ca uh, holding ourselves accountable and other people accountable for like for you know agreed upon moral understandings, just like we were talking about with with personal um, courtesies. Mm -hmm. It's just like there are just accepted things that we understand as society that are just help everybody along. And in, unless we start doing that and creating the culture for that, um, we, and then holding our leaders accountable for that kind of that kind of thing, because right now, what society as a whole is saying, and our, our, as a, for, as our country, is saying that uh, we want somebody to, to make these divides, and that we do have these divisions. And no, 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 you're wrong, and you're you're wrong. And it's like, no, we're, we're still one country. And if we keep dividing, 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 it's just, that's what's going to disintegrate us. You know, it's, it's, that's, it's just silly. Divide to, and conquer. Right, exactly. Divide and conquer is one of the oldest sayings, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's one of the oldest tactics. And, and it's, it's working. Working. We're uh, letting it work. Like gangbusters right now. And I'm, I take full responsibility for my part in it. And I, I work every day to discover more ways that I contribute to that and try to find other ways to do things to, to not contribute to that. Mm -hmm. um, I really, I really want to find a way to share this world with everyone filter. so that everyone can share it with each other and me. There's space for everybody, you know. Like Un unfortunately, I don't, I don't have any good, good or better news to add to this. Um, we we'll just <laughs> kind of shift, shift gears um, to another part of the world, right, China. That's good, right? China is having this bubonic plague oh boy. outbreak in <laughs> like inner note. North Mongolia. Um, so 28 people in quarantine since the November 12th release, about two people from the same area of Mongolia 
um, and and they're showing up with this bubonic plague, but but also uh, the other version of the bubonic plague that that you you can pass from person to person. See, bubonic plague you have to get from the actual animal or or, or flea or whatever, but but the pneumonic plague. Okay, is is the plague that can you know, go from person to person? Like pneumonia. Like you can get it from being around somebody who's coughing and has it, or you can spread it by coughing. <coughs> or, yeah, like. Like that. Probably even <laughs> sharing pipes and stuff, like. Yeah. And. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> apparently, China, like, waited like a week or ten days or something, um, to release the information about these cases and. You know, since those first uh, initial cases, like now, twenty eight more people are are in in quarantine in the same area, and I'm just like, dude. fuck, dude. Like, we can't get along, and we have to deal w- with the plague outbreak. <coughs> All we need now is for extraterrestrials to show up and be like, give us your shit, bitch. Dude, we're such a fucking mess. We just be like, oh. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean that's, that's how, how, I how it is going. On. <laughs> but that's me personally. Just so you guys know, we're hella hungover. Like oh we actually, God. I would Did say, yourself. I'm pretty hungover. Oh, um, okay. well, in the sense I'm that not hungover, I got the bubonic <laughs> plague. In the <laughs> sense that uh, yesterday we were planning on doing the show, but I decided that we weren't hungover enough, so we needed to party for another night and then do the show. Um, we had birthdays to celebrate. We had multiple <laughs> birthdays. That was fun. Moving into something a little bit more at home here in America, cannabis legislation. Um, yeah. All right. So, the federal cannabis legislation, Moore Act, which is you know probably the better of the, you know the the bills out there, uh, has passed the House Judiciary Committee on Wednesday, November twentieth of this year. Um, it will go to vote in the full house and is predicted to do well there and then people are saying it's going to struggle in the Senate that's controlled by a Republican majority. Um, from what I'm seeing, it sounds like the Democrats hope that the Republicans want to just kind of hash out a few things that they don't like or disagree with and then they can make some adjustments, amendments, whatever they do in that whole process and move on with the Moore Act uh, to pass it federally because of this problem, reaction, solution tactics of vaping, okay? This vaping fucking epidemic is a problem, reaction, solution in order to pass federal legislation over cannabis, which will tax it nationwide, for one, um, be able to allow federal administrations to enforce the the legislation, which means more enforcement against the black market, um, which is actually where a lot of, uh, uh, you know, you have a mixture. You have, uh, I think, a lot of the legal market passing off their shitty product to the black market, but then you have your family and boutique farms that are unable to afford to compete with the corporate legal market, and so they're remaining black market, and they're actually the only people out there providing much of an efficacious source. Like, uh, I get it. Okay, we can't have bad vapes going around. It needs to be fixed. It needs to be addressed. But I mean, dude, the way that the people are reacting to this vape epidemic, I'm like, what about cigarettes? They cared less about fentanyl than they do. They cared about vape. Dude, fentanyl. Oh yeah, and cigarettes too. That's hilarious. There there are billboards around here that that say, okay, we're getting rid of, we're banning vapor, but not banning cigarettes okay. and I'm not like I'm not advocating banning anything you know again it goes to personal choice but why why draw a hard line on something where it's like it's you ca- you because, didn't care about these these other because levels because it's a problem reaction solution tactic that's being used and that's why they're it's blowing personal up choice, personal risk. the negative things that are happening with the black market cannabis industry um, in order to pass this federal legislation but you want to know something about cigarettes? I'll tell you <laughs> something about cigarettes. Smoking is responsible for more than 480,000 deaths per year in the United States alone, including more than 41,000 deaths resulting from secondhand smoke exposure. This is about Just one stopped. in five deaths annually, or 1,300 deaths every day. 
on average. Smokers die 10 years earlier than non-smokers. Okay, and I'm I'm not being like, oh, go quit smoking, no, no, no. quit smoking, quit for yourself, don't do it for me. I mean, fuck, like, yeah, I want you to quit smoking for the rest of us too, but oh, like, I want you to anymore. quit smoking for yourself, you know, like, not trying to tell you what to do. <laughs> I'm just offering these statistics that talk about the real fucking epidemics going on out here that there's nothing being done about because they don't want to implement a certain pre-planned solution. Okay, and that's why they're making a big deal about this vaping shit. It, you know, look, I could tell you about a business that's dumping thousands of pounds of moldy fucking weed in, in, into the black market, and, and, and they're a fucking legal business in, in the cannabis industry, you know, but they're going to worry about one specific issue that has harmed, you know, very few people compared to what the real epidemics are harming um, in order to pass legislation that is Paper intentional. Well, what's the federal government going to get out of this? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. All so, the money. Can't have anything for free. Hello, it's America. It's smoke and mirrors, too. It, 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 it's it, really, it's just, it's like, don't pay attention to this, make a big issue of this, and in the meantime, every time... Take more of your civil liberties. Yeah, every time I've seen <laughs> this big issue that everybody's talking about, if you're really paying real close attention to this, the background stuff, these massive things that if, if people really paid attention to it would be really upset about or should be really upset mm -hmm. about, just goes right under the radar. Mm -hmm. Nobody even knows about it. And it's massively affected, you know, the culture for generations mm -hmm. even now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it's, and what the, the hot button issue of the time is going to be uh, different tomorrow. And and mm -hmm. nobody even knew what, that thing that's going to happen for decades. What happened yesterday? Yeah, and and they'll be wondering what's going to happen tomorrow, halfway through whatever article they're reading about what's happening today. Yeah, that's what that, that's what we were talking about earlier. Was uh, when you were gone was just vetting your sources. You know, really make follow the money. Make sure you look through it, um, and and do do this kind of process before you buy it whole. Make sure you check yeah. your source. Make sure you, you see where what it's are coming they trying from. trying to sell you? Yeah, exactly. Check, look at the advertisements around the article and see what the what are they what's trying what's to happening. Sell you? Yeah, exactly. It, it's 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 just it's a level of your own personal accountability for the information you're consuming. That's all. There's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of good sources out there on the internet, obviously, but you have to be able to find them and know how to how to take take the bullshit. And just be like, okay, that, that might not be the most tangible, most reliable source. Is that just something that agrees with my opinion? Or is it something that's actually been vetted and, 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 is, and experts understand and, you know, can give me a really reliable opinion? You know, it's, it's important. It's just, you know, all right, I'm, I'm ranting too. Hey, no, hey, you know, because this uh, vaccine stuff is a really good, good thing to, to really address this you know like uh i'm not i'm not about vaccines i'm not and there's a number of reasons that i'm not about them and they they re it really stems from the fact that we, we needles well <laughs> I, no not not that for me but i mean we come <laughs> we come from evolving without vaccines you know and for like i mean thousands of years we've evolved or whatever without them and i think that that it's a crucial. Oh, yeah, uh, we've passed on so many weak genetics. That's why these fuck. Yeah, that's why the world is doomed now. These <laughs> <laughs> weak genetics are getting through. It's true. The, this is yeah. I mean, you <laughs> are really touching on else. the point that I'm making. Is is We're de evolving? We 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 like essentially need to deal with these natural epidemics in natural ways in order to evolve to be able to be more resilient in the future. We need to evolve with our conditions in order to be able to survive future uh, conditions and evolve to meet the necessities of them. But if we use uh, innovation, technology, you know, and stuff like that it, to interrupt the natural cycle of evolution, uh, and, and, and essentially that is natural selection in a lot of senses, and I, I'd be willing to take full accountability for, you know, uh, dying from something because I naturally die from it, uh, or whatever, but I, I'd rather that be the route for humanity, 
than than yeah. to, to prevent the force <laughs> of the nature from projecting us in, in the efficacious direction. But, like, we're seeing it more and more every day. Like, okay, I was reading an article not that long ago that they're saying that our brains are starting to shrink again. Like, our brains stopped growing bigger and now they're getting smaller. All right, that's a bad thing. <laughs> Because okay. our heads are getting bigger. Our human brains are getting smaller. But also we're seeing all these little kids with thick-ass glasses and shit because you've got screens in front of their fucking face before their eyeballs are even fucking developed. Start there. But, <laughs> you know, it's just Screen like... Screen people. Like, we're also blocking off their natural abilities to develop. You know, we're forcing false reality on these kids and... and they're not developing their eyeballs properly. They're not developing their brains properly. Spatial relations, you know, and how the <laughs> real world works. We're so focused on digital world. If digital world doesn't Virtual exist, reality. there's no... If there's no... Like, I love and hate the internet for this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. a wonderful tool. If you mm -hmm. keep it as a tool, it is not your life. And, and virtual reality, too. You know, like, it's really easy to say the negatives and stuff. But, you know, we know some people who are in the industry. And uh, they're doing amazing things. Like, uh, virtual reality desktops and things is ma making this the the user interface for technology is so much more friendly so mm -hmm. much more active uh, that uh, there's a lot of benefits that can be drawn from the, the advances be in, in a lot of technology well, but, yeah. but essentially yeah. it, you know like but just like a gun can be used to defend yourself too. or participate to participate in to your real community be aggressive around and you. offensive totally like I, I talked about this where I, I remember when the internet came came in because you know old enough to to be at that age where I was like, it's like 15 or so when it really started to take off in households. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, man, if I had this when I was growing up earlier, I would be at a completely different level. These kids coming up with this now, they're, they're gonna so be on light, smarter. they're gonna be light years ahead of, of mm -hmm. where I was at and where I'm at. And in some ways it's true, but it's all in what they consume. I didn't realize that they were just gonna watch cat videos for, mm -hmm. for a generation, you know, Instead some of, of them. Learning. At some of them, not all of them, obviously, right, but right. there's there's a, a group of people who who no, have no, definitely consumed. Be Doogie Howser, you know, they they <laughs> they consume the inquirer of, of newspapers, you know, mm -hmm, yeah. where where it's not so much that that they they uh, they didn't. Yeah, it's just outrageous. Yeah, it's whatever yeah. the whatever appeal to this drama. kind of thing. Yeah, and it's and it's all relevant, and there's no discriminating level of this is reality and this is junk. This is junk food, you know. Yep. Yeah, and everybody prefers junk food. It's more addictive. And it tastes better. Yeah. No. You know what tastes good? Funyuns. Dark cabaret tasted good. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good segue. We're like gonna that. we're gonna bring it to the lighter side. Uh, yes. For a minute. Um, <laughs> with dark cabaret because that is our lighter side. Uh, mm -hmm. Too nice. bad for you guys because you missed it and you'll have to wait until it comes back around again. Um, Hopefully within like a year or something, if not less, uh, because it was it was really fun and exciting. We we were treated to uh, something called Dark Cabaret. It was at Forty uh, Second Street and Moon at the Gateway Theater in downtown San Francisco. Uh, Paul Nathan uh, hosts this Dark Cabaret. Uh, you can check him out at Bad Magician on Instagram. Uh, he is an incredible magician. Don't let his Instagram handle fool you. He, <laughs> he's amazing. Not only is he a magician, but he's done this, this thing with this dark cabaret where he has orchestrated uh, a group of magicians uh, who have their own talents and, and, and are, are, do magic in their own way. And he has found a way to allow them to collaborate with each other. It's almost like there's this film where this magician brings these younger magicians all together um, to solve this mystery. Um, oh, I remember that one. Is it called The Illusionist? The Illusionist is one. I think that might be it. I, I'm trying. I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a really great 
film it was fun that we got to watch and I almost feel uh, like uh, Paul Nathan it, it, you know is doing us a, a little bit of what the guy in this film does because he brings together these magicians who you know on their own uh, just don't don't cover the spectrum um, of entertainment that together uh, they they really cover all together and the way that they interplay uh, the way that they do magic and perform with each other it just it made the show so entertaining it, it's funny um, and it's like nothing I've ever gotten to see before the live performance is just unbelievable and they just had their closing night last night who are, who are the names? You know, you're oh Frank Olivier. That's the get. That's the main um, guy, right? Who puts um, on the show? Yeah, Frank Olivier. He's been in theater for over thirty years. He's fantastic. He's the unicyclist and the juggler. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Paul Debeck. Uh, he's going to be. He just got cast in The Illusionist on Broadway in after York, having yeah. done the European version in, York, <laughs> in England. He just did. Um, he just did that, and now he's doing it in Broadway. Um, and Amazing. He was the Hilarious. toaster act, yep. you know, yep. he, and the, uh, his shadow Dude, puppets were fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Sterling Johnson, who did these incredible bubbles. He was yeah. putting people in <laughs> bubbles, <laughs> putting yeah. bubbles within bubbles within bubbles. He was making them dance, and uh, he was fantastic. Yeah. Um, I posted this little short segment of, of a, a little bit of his bubbles, and oh, good. my good. friend was like, Oh, dude, I need this guy for my daughter's birthday party. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, he's fantastic. Um, and the cool. music was done with Eric McFadden. Oh, my God. That was, guy was so epic. That, their yeah, band he's is so fabulous. Good. And, yeah, he was part of Parliament, so he used to play with George Clinton. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah he was fantastic. incredible, man. Amazing. Dude. Shreds. Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. Shreds. On acoustic, too. Like Spanish <laughs> yeah. style acoustic, but shreds yeah. and a level. Like, and uh, the burlesque woo. was Frankie Fictitious. And she had just won like the biggest burlesque awards that they offer um, yeah. down in LA. What an incredible quality thing, variety yeah. show. Quality yeah. variety. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So yeah. they do that once a year. Dark cabaret folks. for the last twenty years. Yeah, it was, um, it was and, and I mean, for live theater, like you're not going to see anything else really like it. And, yeah. You know, supporting local theater, supporting local artists. Like these are people in our community right. that we're lucky enough to you know experience that they share their talent with us you know yeah so why not support them and that's that was a nice uh, like it's, it was almost like you know when there's a big band that goes to a small venue and you get to see that mm -hmm. it's more like yes. that because these yes. people are going on to do big stage things where people were paying big money to go and and sit in theater and watch them do this thing mm -hmm. yeah for 30 bucks mm -hmm. yeah you got the talent amazing was really talent. there. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, it's amazing. It's kind of like a like personal level. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and you get to meet them one-on-one, -on -one too. You, you Like, afterwards, they're hanging out, and mm -hmm. it's just really cool to, to be a part of that, mm -hmm. like, intimate environment and be that close to these really amazing things that are happening. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's inspiring. Mm -hmm. So look for Dark Cabaret in San Francisco uh, next time it, it comes around. Keep that in mind. You can go follow uh, Paul Nathan at Bad Magician on Instagram, and I'm sure you could find everybody else on social media as well. Yep. Now, I don't know if you recall, but in <laughs> our beginning segment, we kind of talked about this toy that I had ordered from my nephew, um, but had also ordered for myself because it's a kind of nostalgic thing that I, I remember from being younger. And uh, I, we decided that we're going to play a game for you guys. Okay, so we're probably just going to play a real simple game. But, like, this thing's cool because you could play... One person can play it. Like, almost every game except for, like, one of them. Um, up to six people can play almost every game except for, like, one of them. And then, like, one of the games, I think, is only for two people. And then another game is, like, only for one person or only for something like that I mean but it's got a bunch of games um, there's a bonus game for people one person with multiple personalities <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so um, we're just gonna play one of the simpler games um, and uh, it's called brain warp and it's from the 90s here we go get ready to play brain warp select game game one colors Select number of players. 
Four That's what the voices sound like in my head. One. <laughs> Round one. Start on white. Player one. Follow my command. If you don't keep up with me, you're finished. <laughs> Such a light-hearted music after that intensity. <laughs> How hard does this get stuck in your head when you, you hear it in your dreams? Player one, you scored twelve points. Twelve. You made it. Player two, your oh, shit. I should nice probably take this seriously. Red. <laughs> Dark I'm call on it red. What would you call it? Player two. Follow my command. That's pink to me. That's pink. That's, that's a really red. bright shade. Salmon? Yellow. It's a pretty old toy. I don't know. Maybe it was a orange. Red. Yellow. He's crushing it. We might be here a while. <laughs> 12. Oh, tied. How is it like maximum 12? Yeah, it just it keeps going faster and faster. Right, but do you, is it maxed out at 12 or does it keep going? I don't know. It like, has a certain time limit. I don't think I've gotten more than 12 on that first one. <laughs> you know, we to have like a virtual reality twister version of this, you know what I mean? Player four, your turn. Okay. Start on purple. Player four, follow my command. Orange. White. Red. Yellow. I got par. You're a silly bird. <laughs> Here we go, round two. Dark on you really don't know how you're going to play until you play it. You know what I'm saying? culture to a more visual of this round three. culture Player in our one. selection Your of art turn. and Oh shit, round three. Round three? Dark like and this green. is what separates one. the uh, because, like, the children from the other children. Because we're so oh. into Whoa. Whoa. You scored four points. I only scored four, four points. Scored points. 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 I suck! Your turn. Do you... Do you even turn two. colors, bro? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I don't suck as bad oh, as no. <laughs> God damn. Right. Dark on purple. <laughs> player four. <laughs> Don't get upset. Three. Four. 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 Like his nephew did. Player four. You're pretty old toy. I'm, I'm abstract. You scored 22 I get points. I get to interpret dance one. with my style. Wins with 29 points. Oh. Player three is second hey. with 24 hey. points. Player four. Is third with twenty. Who's player four? Points. That's you. Player two oh. is fourth with blah, twenty. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that was just that. That was that one. That was that one bad round. Uh, you get an award for that's fun, dude. You know like, what it is? They started giving participation trophies. Like, here you go, just for showing up. But they stopped giving away sportsmanship trophies. Uh. Like, hey. 
you tried your best. Thanks for being a good loser. I heard the argument that somebody needs to lose, but be gracious about it. It's a learning experience for you. I heard a lot of. I heard the argument that they didn't want them, right? And I was like, okay, but if they truly didn't want them, then they 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 wouldn't been there. Like it's 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 as it's as participatory as the trophies themselves. You know, like if you don't want them, then reject them, toss them in the trash. Don't make them. They'll stop making them. Yeah. Don't, they don't have to be an option. Yeah. You know, if you keep them on your shelf, then... Yes, everybody's <laughs> special. Yes, everybody's special. But what are you actually bringing to the table? This is true improvisation, people. This isn't even on our agenda here. <laughs> this is great. I That's just it. from playing the game. You know, it's just a thought. It's just brain a thought. Warp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it brain warped us into this whole thought, train of thought. And now... Uh, I have lots of those. Yeah, mm. it's engaged our brain on a level. And that's why they stopped making this and started making boppets and shit that have are, are total nonsense. Angry Bop birds. it, pull it, twist it. No. Colors, numbers, and then this games the games that are more complex have to do with like patterns and, mm. and cracking codes with numbers and, and colors. <laughs> Dude, it's a really cool, hella great learning game <laughs> and they stopped making it and the only reason I can imagine is because it was actually making kids hella smarter. Think. Making you yep. think. Being yep. brain power. They're all into dulling you down and distracting mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Because if you become a radical thinker, you might buck the system. Junk and food that sells. Is bad. Tradition. It's cold out here on the balcony in San Francisco, just so you guys know. It's like 141 in the afternoon. There's a slight breeze. And it's chilly. So We're it's... suffering to bring you our opinions. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully some entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> Next section we have here is astrology in action. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Yay. your segues. <laughs> They're the best. And I want to uh, <laughs> just shout out to Kapacha with the weekly paleo report and the new paradigm astrology community amazing. he is an amazing astrologer and yoga instructor and uh, we just absolutely love him and his paleo report that uh, he does weekly for free usually every wednesday on his youtube channel uh, you gotta look up the paleo report if you like astrology he'll lead you into a vast infinite world of of knowledge and more great astrologers um, uh, like the whole new paradigm astrology team um, I just I personally want to mention um, Ari and, and Tim uh, they have been particularly <laughs> is that so shut up game Tim and Ari Who's thank you great? you've been particularly just helpful like especially just for me I have to say personally I'm Tim, like I really connect with the the moon videos that you're doing, Um, I just can't thank uh, the whole community enough, I mean I want to shout out to everyone, all the astrologers on the team really because they they all have their own specification and the way that they articulate their their knowledge and wisdom, um, it it really comes together to, to like we were talking about do more than anyone could do on their own. Um, but just lately, for me personally, like uh, Ari and Tim, you guys have been just amazing and, and fucking hitting the nails on the head and talking about the tough stuff and uh, doing the work that that people need to be doing. You're really setting the example for doing the work uh, that, that we all need to be doing. And you're leading by example, and I just want to thank you for that. Um, and we wouldn't have this section, Astrology in Action, if it weren't for you all, um, especially Kapacha, uh, because that's what really got us on to astrology back in 2015 when we started watching the Paleo Report. Um, he has just been offering wisdom, like, consistently for years now. Um, and so we've started to study astrology and she is practically i can't say professional astrologer but the way that she practices Mm -hmm. astrology and chart reading is is she has her her own technique and uh, i think that the her technique really shows understanding um 
especially based on how I'm seeing the other astrologers in these communities that understand and express their understanding of astrology, she takes it on and is able to communicate and, and kind of translate it um, in a way that people can really understand and, and relate to. And it's helped me understand and relate to it in a way that I actually have been able to learn and contribute to, like, the readings that she does. And mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we do these little, like, cup we call them couples readings because we're a couple and we offer a reading together. Like, we kind of look at the charts together oh, yeah, and fun. talk I about them it. together mm -hmm. and you bouncing so off good. of each other. And, like, we do them a lot for our friends, couples, families, people's mm -hmm. kids and stuff. We just find it fun and entertaining, um, and, uh... Yeah, you learn a lot. That's, that's why fun. we have this, this section, Astrology in Action, um, and... Happy birthday, Solar Sages! Oh, we're coming up on a new moon, aren't we? Yes. Oh. New moon on November Everybody 26th in moon. Sagittarius. Mmm. How fun. Would you like to take a look at the notes that you wrote? Oh, yeah. I know a little bit about what's going on. We got Mars project, project. going into Scorpio, so we could say the warriors going into the underworld, while quite a few other planets are going into Sagittarius, you know, the truth sayer or truth seeker. So um, let's, let's figure it out, I guess, you know, what the truth is and what's worth fighting for. I've heard the phrase of words the last couple of days reiterated, choose your battles. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Um, what else we got going on? So Mars going into Scorpio is going to be opposite the Uranus and Taurus that's been happening. So it is a challenge of our values. Um, Uranus, the future, and Taurus, our values, with the warrior and the underworld. You know, we really have to use our abilities and our superpowers and our means of communication to voice what the truth is and what battles are worth fighting at this point in time. Prioritize, huh? Right. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. My eyelash. Oh. <laughs> um, Ju Venus and Jupiter entering Capricorn coming up in December, so you gotta find, you know, what duty do you love? I see. I see a lot of this in our newsfeed, our Google newsfeed. Um, they they talk about this celestial kiss going on between Venus and Jupiter, and how they're going to kiss each other in the sky, and um, you know Venus having to do with relationship, and um, and uh, I I think you understand Venus a lot better than I do. And Seven Jupiter. minutes in heaven for celestial beings. Mm. <laughs> Jupiter being expansive, um, you know, and so That's I feel hilarious. like it's this expansion of these Venus energies going on. It's what like a lot of people are really excited about. You could probably explain it. You're a lot doing better. wonderful. So it's astrology in action. We just we see it going on. We gotta really be talking about the issues globally. You know, and we find microcosmic ways in our daily lives to enact the change, you know, recognizing our purchasing power and find a balance in your own life too. Yeah. Be happy mm -hmm. be happy in your own life so you don't don't be affected by everything else in the Stop world. Stop comparing yourself. Oh, as much, you mm -hmm. know, be aware, but don't let it rule your life. Don't let the negativity get to you completely. You can you can take time to be happy about what you have and what's around you and the don't people in it. You know, lose yourself. Yeah. In other people's priorities. It helps you. It helps you uh, maneuver the bigger stuff and the negative things in a more objective way too. When you're when you're more yeah. centered that way. I say I stop exposing myself to things that make me feel bad. So, <laughs> so like, if something, you know, is just really starting to bother me or I'm starting to recognize negative patterns in myself, so I'm like, you know, something, it comes from something. Yeah. You know, it's usually mm -hmm. a symptom of something else. You know, so. our friend uh, Thomas, uh, who has, has been watching us and commenting on this uh, live feed. Hey, Thomas. Hey. He, he, hey, Thomas. 
he was telling us that he um, like snoozed all the news and international and all this stuff that was causing these negative thoughts and feelings. He like snoozed it for like 30 days and and after doing that by the end of the 30 days before the stuff started showing up again he he was finding himself thinking more positively feeling more positively uh -huh. almost like creating thoughts of his own uh -huh. you know and yep. he's not That's it. he's not a negative dark person because when he creates uh -huh. thoughts of his own he thinks about positive things um, and is constructive in thought but but and it was really interesting because recently the snooze ended yeah. and he said I think things started popping up and he started seeing them again and uh, he he noticed immediately that he started having Changing more negative demeanor. thoughts mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. uh, and yeah. I mean yeah I just I really encourage people to <coughs> stop uh, ingesting things that are try bad for you tr try things out you know what I mean like uh, c disconnect yourself from the things that are causing the negative feelings and thoughts it moderation and not anxiety. necessarily forever just to get a grip yes stop. yeah Stop doing these things that are giving you anxiety. You don't have to participate in everything that everybody else is participating in. You, you can if inform it's too, you but feel without. Bad, yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, listen to yourself. Listen to your heart. Get to know yourself in your heart. What is your true heart, and what is what's being reflected inside you from everything that you're around that's outside of you? Don't be afraid to be in tune with yourself. Don't be afraid to be honest with yourself. If something in your life is not working, that's okay. Find something that will work. Yeah, and if something is affecting you negatively, try to try to figure out a way to let it to to view it objectively. Because even if it's negatively impacting you, it's to, a learning experience. Yeah, to respond to it negatively kind of is not. From it. Yeah, you can you can make it work for yourself. Like that's something you actually taught me when I was going through the whole school process thing, where I was really frustrated with how I was mm -hmm. how I was having to deal with uh, the process and and the assignments, and I didn't know what was expected, and and it, and that's just like a whatever situation you're in, whether that's at work or you know socially or family, whatever. Is you if you get buckled down by it you got to take a, an objective look at it and then try to try to make it work for you in some way for where everybody involved uh, benefits somehow yeah. some way mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. just, yeah compromise is a thing mm -hmm. we Absolutely. all have to do it at some point mm -hmm. you know but boundaries but are good too both yeah. ways yeah yes. both ways both have to be willing to meet in the middle exactly it's and if you are looking be receptive if you are looking for for new exterior conditions or or, or new influences and things, um, you know, we, we like to offer you these available resources. Communication is all about sharing resources. Yep. Yeah. So some available resources for you if you're looking for some new new input and, and things, or even if you're just looking to to continue following some of the cool stuff that is going on. We want to uh, let you know about the Eddie Lep Show. The, the OG Eddie Lep Show is this really awesome show with uh, a real roots, canvas, culture, uh, enthusiast, and activist. And he, he is somebody who anyone who appreciates cannabis uh, should pretty much be infinitely thankful for mm -hmm. because... Uh, you know, it's people like Eddie Lepp who really forged the path for all of the privilege that we have in uh, the cannabis culture and industry today. Uh, he's fighting really hard to, to keep things um, to the roots and, and to keep things a, a, about cannabis um, and not just about profit. Um, so, you know, he, he has a show um, and if you guys want to get to know somebody who has a true heart in, in the cannabis culture and, and who, who is, is, is yeah, a, a historical figure in cannabis, um, really get to know Eddie Lepp. And, and you can do that through his, his podcast show. 
so go go find him on social media, you know, on YouTube and Facebook and stuff. The OG Eddie Lep Show. Um, check it out. It's really good. Um, and then the, you know, there's a slightly a smaller podcast, maybe a little bit less known that some of our friends do as well. Um, and it's called uh, the Nobody Likes Us the podcast. Um, my buddy, uh, a couple of them, a couple of my buddies f- from high school, they started a podcast and they released the first five episodes um, on Halloween night this year, and they've been working on the second series of episodes. I really encourage you all to go uh, check them out. You can find them on Instagram. Uh, nobody likes us the podcast. Uh, it's it's awesome. I mean. If you like that kind of thing, you know, if if you have if a you weak like this, stomach, you should like that, right? I, if you like this, you might like that. I'd, <laughs> I'd say, you know, um, they're a little bit grittier in some ways, um, a lot, like probably a lot grittier less political. Grittier than bubonic plague. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Or, or they get at least that gritty. I mean, they've got a whole section called parasites. Fair. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Now. Um. Right. So, yeah, dude. If you like gritty. Um, macabre kind of dark side uh, side of things. Go check out. Nobody likes us. The podcast. Good for perspective. They're killing it. They're fucking just destroying the podcast scene. That's cool. Um, and I just uh, want to say uh, again, thank you, Dark Cabaret. The show was awesome. We encourage you all to look into past shows and learn about Dark Cabaret and and look for it in the future. Uh, we look forward to seeing you out at one of the shows uh, that they do in the future. And then I'd like to say again, look out for that Pele report by Capacha uh, because it is really enlightening. And they're doing something called Astrology Rising 2020 down in Costa Rica. And if you if you're not into astrology, but you're pretty damn sure that you want to be and and that you're going to be then I would say check out Astrology Rising 2020. Uh, It would be a great way to get involved in astrology, um, to really, it it would, I mean, man, if I could open my world up to astrology with Astrology Rising 2020, I I think, I mean, that would be a beautiful introduction uh, because it, and it's not just for beginners at all. They they actually they can cover very complex topics and and get really in in depth. But the way that I see it being structured is that if you are learning astrology and you are new, that that they are able to articulate themselves and communicate in, in ways that you're able to like really learn quickly and grasp these uh, concepts that lead to more complex concepts. Um, and the way that the astrologers who are part of the New Paradigm Astrology community teach, um, it, it, it works. I, I, I mean, this is a personal thing, I just recently got into astrology. If there's any negative connotation with astrology, because I personally had some of my own uh, views on it, um, I, I didn't really think of it, I thought of it in the way that you'd see in a newspaper or a magazine, and he's really broad reaching not Some how can sign they, astrology horoscope right and it, and in, and it's and there was a, it was an interesting perspective shift once I started hanging around with people who really understood it and really uh, have a philosophy behind it and that's that was a key word that I started associating with it was like a philosophy mm-hmm. where it's like it's it's something that you can you can connect to within the own uh, realms of your life you know as it applies to you and, and something to keep in mind. If, if it comes up and, 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 it, and, it's, and it resonates with you, then why not focus on it for a while and think about it and, 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 and like meditate on it or whatever it is you, your process is. You know, that's, that's kind of how I started to view it and it really does help. Oh, yeah. So check it out, guys. <laughs> it, 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 it's tough, it's what's going on, you know, literally. But uh, I'm gonna move on to uh, our final section, anti-self-deprecation. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is where we get to brag about ourselves. Um, and so I'm going to start off by reminding everyone that episode 5 
of the Cups and Bowls show was released on Bosad 6150 YouTube channel. You guys are more than welcome to go check out that. Uh, it's like an hour and a half long episode. I think we are at like a two and a half hours about for this episode. Wow. So. Time flies um, when Yeah, episode. like hopefully in the next month or so. <laughs> Editing could be done, right? It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, we could chop some things it, up. It'll only show. take like a week or so to export. Um, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully in the next month we'll get this episode, episode six, out to you guys um, on FOSAB5150 YouTube channel. And if you'd like to see us uh, live stream to YouTube as well, go subscribe to JP FOSAD, uh, which is where I'd like to do the live streaming at. Um, and you guys are more than welcome to follow us on Instagram at FOSAD5150, uh, FOSAD FPV, uh, Ratchet FPV, and Immersion VR. Um, and as well as on Facebook, uh, if you want to follow our personal profile on Facebook, you can find us at Jamber Fosad. Um, and then we have all of our, our public figure pages, like our FPV pages on Facebook, our Fosad FPV and Ratchet FPV. Our oh, those are fun. Those are fun accounts, man. <laughs> yeah. And there'll be some new content coming soon since I rebuilt that, that racing quad and I just got this new 7 inch. So we'll be releasing some new content on, on those FPV um, profiles. And then there's Detritus Productions, which is our, our media productions uh, Facebook page, as well as Immersion VR, which is our VR uh, production page. And um, some, some new stuff should be coming out soon on our artist page, JP Fosad, on Facebook. Um, we, may, we may be doing an event here soon. I really hope to get into some of the local smoke sessions uh, before the holidays because I want to make our botanical mandala art available to all of you. And I, I guess I have to say as well, uh, if you'd like to check out our Etsy, we just came out with like over 10 new um, art, fashion, accessory products uh, on Etsy. I, I think that the choices that we made um, to put our art on um, as far as product wise uh, would make great gifts um, for yourself or for other people. Um, you'll be supporting local artists. Um, our Etsy is mm -hmm. FOSAD 5150, like most other things. Um, there's our website, FOSAD5150.me. You can go check that out. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting some work done to that here soon. How do you spell that? Uh, FOSAD 5150 is F-O-E-S-A-D 5150. Um, let's see. I am also offering cinema drone services. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to go check out some of the cinema drone work that I've been doing as a FOSAD FPV, you can go to my FOSAD FPV YouTube channel oh, that's and fun see too. some yeah, of the later really good work that we've done. Uh, you can also go check out um, our travel documentary from our summer road trip, The Journey. That's cool. Uh, that 2019 fun. summer road trip. That's out on great. FOSAD 5150 <laughs> YouTube channel. And uh, we hopefully will be doing more kombucha soon. Symbiology kombucha. Do yourself um, the favor. And <laughs> kimchi and sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my god, the sauerkraut. Holy mm. shitballs. <laughs> We're supposed to bring some kimchi to kind of show you guys. Um, I, I guess uh, what I could do is I'll be right back. I'd oh. like to end the show like this. While so you're done, I'll, I'll get entertain it. them for yeah. a moment. Uh, I'm gonna. No, it's all good. It's water. Um, so yeah, with, with uh, just like objective point of views on this, uh, the art that they have, you're gonna get like a lot of weed-based uh, shirts and stuff like that out there that are really obnoxious and loud and you know whatever. These are artistic pieces, mandalas with actual other floral elements in them that really bring uh, like a really nice element to the shirt 
uh, that you're wearing and you could you know show that you support weed and but have something that looks nice yeah. you know and it's not it's not like a cartoon or, yeah, or so just so, right it, i mean I, as much as i love that there's it doesn't it doesn't fully represent something if you want something nice to wear it, it's there's, not hokey yeah it's not hokey at all and it's and it's uh it's it's got a really nice uh element to plus it's there there are things that um i personally you know i'm pretty particular and and the, the styles and everything, <laughs> the styles and everything are really are really good and uh, the way they're placed and all that stuff. So it's it's you a good really way good. to you, you know support the, other the day art. Creating like a couple of different products. There's a mug, and he put the two designs we have so far on both sides of the mug. Mm -hmm. and there's a couple other products where you get both the designs, but yeah. Yeah. He came up with a bunch of different shirts and like some long sleeves and oh it was so cute little baby onesie yeah <laughs> yeah they're really they're really passionate about it i mean like they they work hard on it all the time and it's it's uh it's really cool so and this next year more designs coming out we're gonna learn to vectorize our images so. vectorize and then you're and then the uh also the uh the actual hanging art uh once you learn how to seal the thing so it can kind of keep everything in uh uh, you know, We've fresh. We've been doing a lot of resin art. Resin, awesome. right? Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. It's uh, so it's always evolving and always getting better too. They're never they're never resting on a, a one thing. They're constantly. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Now. Now, now we that can end the if show. you've been getting high with us, this uh, should make you um, your yeah. stomach growl like crazy. This is a mixed berry cream cheese. Swiss roll cake, cake. <laughs> made by Ambrizi. Mm -hmm. uh, sh she okay. uh, does amazing baking miracles. Sure does. Um, yeah. So she does a lot of ferments, like uh, the the kombucha, the sauerkraut, the kimchi. She does pickled onions, but mm -hmm. she also makes these. Um, mm -hmm. Dairy-free, gluten-free, chocolate peanut butter cups. Oh my God, they're the best um, things. And in the she's wide world. thinking about making them completely vegan by switching the honey to maybe like coconut sugar or something. Uh, messing around cool. with the recipe a little bit. Um, and she loads. makes these strawberry <laughs> Swiss roll cakes, <laughs> fudge okay, Swiss roll cakes. Jesus. Right. And this is a, a mixed berry Swiss roll cake. Um, and so if you've mm. ever had a little Debbie's Swiss roll cake, you this you'll is a billion times better. know what I'm talking about. Uh, we were eating them and like we'd buy the box of them in the grocery store and like we'd have eaten the whole box by the time we got home from the grocery store because standing in line and dealing with the grocery store was so stressful. <laughs> yep. And I was like looking at the ingredients and I like couldn't pronounce most of them and I was like, oh man, this stuff, I don't think it's very good for us. Mm. And so I was like, hey, why don't you make a cake size Swiss roll? Yeah. That's kind of like the little dubbies, but the size of a cake. Well, like, and you can make it out of better ingredients for us. I mean, it's not, this isn't healthy by any means. It's not <laughs> dairy free or gluten free oh. or anything. It's everything that I'm not supposed to have. Um, <laughs> little but Debbie she made it for Corinne's like birthday. Happy birthday, oil. Corinne. And uh, we're enjoying this cake comparison. with you. <laughs> mm hmm. Yay. Yay, and, uh, yay, yay. It's amazing. I think this is how we're going to end the show. Yep. With cake. We're going to have our cake and eat it too. Cake, cake, cake. Have yours. Cake, cake. Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed oh, sweet. episode six of the Cups and Bowls mm -hmm. show. Goodbye, Facebook. Bye, humans. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Bye, Instagram. Bye, Instagram, humans. It's nice to be instant friends with you. And goodbye, <laughs> live recorded. Bye, live recorded. Bye, live recorded. Bye, recorded. Bye, recorded. Bye, recorded. Bye, recorded. Bye, recorded.